Good evening. This is the regularly scheduled uh, meeting of the Architectural Board of Review for March 3rd, 2020. Um, roll call, please. Okay. Uh, Member Dahlman. Here. Member Waymeyer. Here. Member Kerouac. Here. And Chair Hunter. Okay, here. And so members um, Deegan, Callahan, and uh, Dittmer are absent. Which is too bad. We've got a sort of an important agenda here. Right. Um, all right, I can't find my, my agenda. Or is there anybody in the, uh, no, the minutes of February 4th? Everybody had a chance to take a look at those and any comments or corrections? If none, uh, somebody would like to. I'll move approval. Okay. I second that. Okay, all in favor of the minutes of uh, February 4th, say aye. 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 Okay, the uh, next item on the agenda is uh, any items that are not on the agenda, any people that are in the audience that would like to discuss something that's not on the agenda. I, I don't see anybody have meet that criteria, so we'll move on to uh, item number four, which is a public hearing to review the site plan to construct a new Jaguar dealership building and site improvements at 43 Sherwood Terrace. Uh, this is a public hearing, so those that are gonna talk, which I assume is both of you, uh, you need to stand and raise your right hand and I have to swear you in. Uh, and just uh, repeat after me. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth? Oh, you actually, just say I do. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and the testimony you're about to give? If so, please say I do. Thank you. Okay, who's, who's gonna start? You guys are up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, one thing we do want to mention to everyone tonight is always that we're uh, broadcast on local access cable TV, so even though we could hear you if you say something that's not into the microphone, people at home can't, so it's good to, uh, to use the microphone, and we can get, grab a portable one if you need it, too. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Bob Flubacher. I'm with Robert Flubacher Architects. I'm here tonight on behalf of Jordan Aaron, uh, and his family who are the owners of Imperial Motors Jaguar. Uh, they are proposing to build a new building, uh, two pieces of property to the south of their current building, which is on the west frontage of uh, Route 41. Um, the package you have is uh, pretty self-explanatory. I'm not a great presenter and uh, expounder on things, so uh, I much prefer to answer questions, but basically what we have is a one-story automobile dealership made up of generally two components. There is the public access part of the building, which is the showroom, the service write-up, uh, which is the bump on the south end of the building, uh, and then the related offices and uses within the building that is clad in a aluminum composite material or a Luca bond, uh, and then has very large butt glazed uh, glass storefront uh, at the, uh, I guess it would be the east, north, and south sides of the showroom. And then there is a second component of the building, which is the, the shop, the service related portions, parts, more back of the house functions that is clad in a corrugated metal panel. Um, the building is one story with a, about a six or 7,000 square foot mezzanine. Um, a tremendous amount of the detail that's in the building is dictated from a, a Jaguar Land Rover design manual, which I happen to bring with me tonight. Um, it's 500 pages. It's down to the lamps that are used in the customer waiting area. So I will defend this book as much as I can. Um, it's actually a, a very nice design that they've done. Um, we were here, how many years ago was that? Five years ago? With a dramatically different corporate design for Jaguar. And fortunately, our timing was such that we were able to not build that uh, design 
and wait for the new design to come out, which is a far, far superior design than what was presented originally. So with that, I'll open it up to any questions that you may have. If there's something you'd like me to go into greater detail on, I'd be happy to. Anybody have anything so far as far as the site plan? I just have one, and that's the egress off of 41. I assume you've got that taken care of. We are in the process. We've applied to and are waiting for comments back from IDOT. Um, the design of the access off 41 is in essence extending the deceleration lane that's currently there for the exchange to, uh, to go farther north and, and share that same deceleration lane. But that is in process, yes. Okay. Do you have any renderings or colors or? Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> so just keep going with it, Bob. There's a rendering in your packet of the, the front of the building. Um, yeah, I'm not sure find how to. In there, Bob. There, it's not included in there. Um, Do you have all of this on there? This is your packet um, on the website. Yeah, and I thought I saw it in there. It's the, uh, the, the page after the architectural drawings. In the big set. So you don't have a slide of it to put up there? Uh, it, it is. If you just want to hit page down a few times, I think you'll get to it. Yeah, I think it'd be better if we could see it up there than. Yeah, it is. Well, those were the elevations. There we go. That's better. So the um, the rendering is uh, what they call their arc design, and there are different versions of the arc design. Um, one is when there's two franchises. Uh, a, different, a different design is when there's one franchise. This particular building has been designed as a two franchise model, specifically to have used car sales in the right half of the showroom and new car sales in the left half of the showroom. Um, I have samples of the materials. Um, the dark color that's on the rendering is, is this color of a Luca bond. And the lighter, uh, it's, it's very hard to see in, in that rendering, but there's a lighter color, a Luca bond, between the two elements in the front. And then also there's an angled, a, a camfered face that goes from that dark color, a Luca bond, back to the glass. It's at a 45 degree angle, and that's that lighter color as well. And then this is the, um, the material that's on the service shop portion of the building. It's a corrugated metal panel applied horizontally. I have a couple because they actually have three or four different approved designs of metal panels that they use, but these are, this is the color of that metal panel. The glass is a, um, uh, if you're familiar with Pilkington, they have a system that has a perpendicular glass uh, panel that's the wind load resistance for a butt glaze glazing system. Uh, that was what they started out with. They have gone to some other manufacturers, similar systems with that. But the idea is it's a clear glass, you know, 13 foot tall, 50 foot long glass wall. Similar to how like a, an Apple showroom might have that large unobstructed glass face. 
Can you just sort of go back and spin through the elevations, even though we've got them here, just in case somebody has some questions? So the rendering is obviously the front elevation, um, which is the top drawing on our sheet of elevations. Um, what you cannot see in this rendering is on the left side, recess back about 60 feet or so, is the entrance to the service write-up area. Uh, it's a couple of overhead doors. Uh, it, they look deceiving on the elevation. They look like they're just standard aluminum doors. They are not. They are fast-acting uh, doors, which are predominantly glass uh, ribbed. They're about six-inch strips of glass. So there's a little metal frame between each piece of glass, but they're predominantly glass um, and, and fast-acting for, obviously, energy purposes. So that module, too, the service write-up area, is clad in that lighter Alucabon material. So if you go to the next drawing down, you can see that's now this, the south elevation. You see the side of the service write-up area um, with that lighter Alucabon color. To the right of that is the darker Alucabon that clads the showroom module. Above it and to the rear of it is the corrugated metal that clads the shop. <clears throat> the third drawing down is the rear elevation that faces Sherwood Terrace. Sherwood Terrace. And then the um, bottom elevation is the north elevation, which again is made up of the showroom module and then the service module with the corrugated metal. Anything? Yep. Building signage, which is shown on these elevations, is again um, corporate standard signage. Uh, the Jaguar letters are backlit uh, individual letters on the Aluka Bond. Any signage that is on the corrugated metal portion of the building has a back panel and that is individual letters on the back panel. So you'll see in the third elevation down there's a there's a rectangular panel that the signage is on. Bob, what will happen to the existing building? Will it be, still be part of Jaguar or will it be sold or, or become something else? I'll let the guy that owns that building <laughs> talk about that. I guess my question is really related to what happens to the leapers. Are you going to reuse them somehow? Oh no, those or? are those will come down is because once we vacate that building, the signage that says Jaguar on that building will come down. And then we- Those go away. Yeah, they'll go away because this will have a new signage package because the signs change as well. Okay, so uh, the one, I only have one concern. I like the colors, uh, but I'm concerned about the west elevation. I'm not in favor of corrugated metal, uh, but if that's the, their design, I can live with it. But I am concerned that uh, all four sides of the building are important and this back side doesn't seem to be, uh, have much of anything on it. The existing building uh, where your dealership is on the back side of it, it's got a nice row of windows and it actually looks quite nice. Uh, but in this case, it's facing another op office, office building that's directly across the street from it. And uh, it would be nice if that, if that back, that rear elevation had some, uh, either some windows similar to what's on the other building we, or something. We've been looking at it as well, so Bob's got some. I potentially have a solution for you. Yeah, that would do it. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. That is actually a different uh, building that has a slightly wider service department than the proposal here does. Uh, and in that particular case, the window, the strip of windows and the recesses that those windows are in are the exact same proportion as the showroom modules, that the rectangular showroom modules. So we'd have to do something slightly different on the back of this building, but that is clearly an option we have to add some life to that back wall of the building, yes. Well, I'd like to 
applaud you. That's the uh, the fastest. Time. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> and I'm sure that's going to help the quality of the workers in there too. Right. Uh, having a little right. bit of that relief. Are there any uh, lights on the building from this rendering? There are, doesn't appear to be many fixtures on the building. Is that correct? There's a handful of, for lack of a better term, wall packs mm -hmm. that are at a couple of the doors, the, the overhead doors and some of the man doors. But there is no other type of decorative lighting in the building. The, um, the exterior side lighting is basically made up of two different components. The general parking lot lighting poles that have general illumination. And then there are bollards that um, basically mark the entrances to the building. So there's a couple at the front entry and there's a couple at each of the side doors that uh, highlight the sidewalk and entrance into the building. There's some specialty lighting that's actually more inside the building. There's a, a white detail light that goes around the perimeter of the showroom glass that's on the inside of the glass that kind of creates a, a fine little white line kind of outlining the, the edge of the showroom for somebody driving by. This building is designed to be dark at night with the showroom lit so that people who are passing by on the highway can see into the showroom and see the vehicles inside the showroom. The parking is generally configured so that the, the customer parking is on the highway side of the building and would mostly be vacant at night, allowing kind of an unobstructed view into the showroom. <coughs> so the screening of the mechanical equipment on top is, is this corrugated that you're showing, oops, that you're showing us here. Correct. Anybody have anything else on the elevations? I just had the same west elevation concern, but that's what been done. No, just the lack of any kind of penetration or articulation. So it, I think it's great. But, but on you're the, proposing. So. But you are proposing to do this, this strip window on the west side. Um. Let me phrase it in a way that, uh, yes, if we need to. We need to. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> then, then yes. There's, there's issues inside the building with the, the windows. They're uh, west-facing glass, so it's really a brutal light late in the afternoon. We, we have that at the existing store. We have really large windows that face to the west. So more than likely there'll be some sort of window treatment or tinting on that glass or something to just cut down the, the glare of that light. But, um, and the heat. And the, yeah, and the heat. Um, but we're more than willing to, you know, create the architectural fenestration on that side to give a little character to that wall. Is there any way, Bob, that you have enough dimension that you could put a series of blades in that window so that you could, is this, is this sort of a sunscreen to help out? We could, we could do a, uh, projecting sunscreen above the window it's it's not that tall it's like three four feet tall so um i think a single sun blade would you know be enough single row i just want to ask about this trash enclosure is there not a fancier trash enclosure in your book there this is like <laughs> this is the, you know it's not really that big of a deal because everything looks great but i just am curious like this doesn't seem to go along with the rest of the building. Our original goal was to have no enclosure. Yeah. Uh, have the bushes on the one side and basically have it open to the north. Um, that would be our preferred uh, direction. Um, in the other facility that that uh, rear re rendering is from, uh, we're actually doing a complete enclosure out of the corrugated metal panel. So we could revise those doors to be metal metal panel clad that matches the building behind it. I'm, I'm just afraid those are going to look bad in a short period of time. Wait. The metal would look bad? Yeah, the, with the 
garbage men Dinging them. You know, doing their thing, you know. But that's certainly an option. <coughs> that it may actually even look better just with the cedar boards horizontally rather than vertically. Just kind of pick up the rhythm of the corrugated on the building. Yep. And we'd be more than happy to paint them the exact same color as the building too. I just think it'd be easier to repair, easier to maintain that if they were cedar boards. Belt, the belt metal, yeah. 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 And maybe they have such a wide gap between yeah. the boards. You know, just yeah, I think that's a great idea. Down. I like the idea that you had of the horizontal cedar rather than the corrugated metal because with the garbage men and other things, those things get beat up over time. Yeah, yeah. We will for sure do that. Okay. Now you got a lot of stuff here on signage. And lighting. Uh, it was a couple of comments. We have a uh, we have instigated the uh, dark sky in Village Lake Bluff, and. Wherever we can, we try and implement things. And one of our experts on another board has uh, made a couple of suggestions. And Mike, can you? Uh, I don't have. Uh, sure, I, on that. I have uh, Brian's comments here. Um, so a, a couple um, thoughts and suggestions Brian Renner had was, um, you know, to uh, to have it dim after hours at night. Um, and to have a, a warmer color temperature, more like 3,000 Kelvin. What are your thoughts on those? I can, um, somebody had a thought for me there. Um, as far as the dimming of the lights, there, there will be a lighting control package that will basically shut off most of the parking lot during the night. Um, there's a series of cameras that are mounted on the outside of the building, so we need to need, uh, leave a light level bright enough that the cameras will pick up what's going on at the cars, but that's not full illumination of the parking lot. So there will be a shutdown of the amount of light that's there over the night hours. And again, given that um, kind of goal of having the darker environment with the showroom lit bright for that view into the showroom, we, we would want the parking lot you know, not lit as brightly as a traditional uh, automobile dealership lot would be. Um, the color temperature is a little bit more complex. Um, the, the dealership manual basically requires 4,000 degree uh, parking lot lights. They've done a number of analytics and determined that that's the best temperature to render the colors of the vehicles in the parking lot for customers to look at it. Um, ComEd has come out and um, suggested replacement lights and, and they've done the work on the existing dealership with what ComEd had recommended for the light fixtures on their parking lot. And um, Jordan brought a cut of what they provided and they're actually 5,700 degree LEDs that are in the current facility. So the 4,000 is gonna be a lot warmer than what's in that current and I, you know, I don't know, I can't, you know, say for sure by looking at it, but it looks like the exchange is pretty much that same color, pretty close to a daylight type of, type of color. I, I don't know that I would want to have a similar kind of parking lot lighting right next door to it that would be as dramatic as going from a 5,500 to a 3,000. I think the 5,500 or 4,000 will be, our building will look better at the 4,000, but uh, I don't want to go too yellow. It'll really, it'll really accent the yellowness of a 3,000 degree. So if it's okay, we'd like to propose the... the 4,000 is about daylight. 4,000, no, um, 5,500 is daylight. 4,000 is fluorescent. 3,000 is halogen white. And 2,700 is I'm going incandescent. the wrong direction, you're right. Yeah. We just relit my office, and, and of course this is interior, not exterior, but we went with 4,000 everywhere, and it's just about perfect. Yeah. It's what people are really used to with fluorescent lighting. 
the, the fluorescents that are up there, that's probably 4,000 up behind you there. Those are probably 2,700. Yeah, those look like 3,000 up there. But we really, you know, they actually will make you change out the lighting heads if you're not 4,000 in the parking lot. So we have pretty kind of limited flexibility that, yeah. from the manufacturer. They are dark sky compliant fixtures. Okay, what I see with lighting is most commercial things are going toward 4,000 yeah. and residential things uh, are going toward 3,000. I agree with you 100%. Okay, and then so the the other the control issue then of either dimming down or, sh or shutting off. Yes. The nighttime lighting is. Is that going to satisfy what Brian is looking for? Pretty much. I think so. Yeah. Okay. I, I just want to say with the with the dimming down at night, it has to we it'll kind of be dependent on security. A, I don't know if you're aware, but there's been a lot of car theft in right. the past couple of years. And the lighting is very important for the security because they're monitored cameras. So they need to see what's going on in between cars and so on. So we, we got to find a happy balance. Understand. And they seem to come right inside. Pardon me? They, seem, they also seem to come right inside the building. They do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anybody have any questions on the, on the parking lot lighting, the layout, or the fixture, or anything we have here? Where's the signage? So just this page has my uh, my memo on what's going to be an exception or not, that and then the sign uh, signage. these pages back here somewhere have uh, the signs. Everybody got their signage package in here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the leaper is going away. As you, yeah, it's going away as you see it on top of the sign. So it's this type of sign with the logo on it. So those are the monument signs. Mm -hmm. There'll be one on the east or one on the west entrance of the property. And then some directional signs as well. And then, of course, what you saw on the, on the base of the building on the east side. And then which side was north? That? North, north side. Which How tall is that, is that monument sign? Oh, it does say in, yeah, 87 inches. Okay. Yeah, uh, 20 feet 8 inches is what it said for the uh, dimension the on there. And the code is uh, 20 feet, so okay. it's an exemption request. Yeah. But the, the leaper itself, that's such a cool thing. You can't stick that inside someplace or do something with it? No, I can't. <laughs> really? All, yeah, all the graphics on the inside of the building are all dictated. They're all four color graphics now. Can you just take it home, put it in your yard? <laughs> yeah, put it yard. Thing. <laughs> if you like, we can work something out. Right. Or put it in Bob's yard. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, okay, so moving on. Anybody have any issue with the signage numbers? Because there's a number of exemptions here. Yeah. You know, an exemption of eight inches is not going to set the world on fire. Um, Where's the third wall sign? I believe it's on the west elevation. Well, I would, okay. we're, we're 
jaguar on the north, that on okay, the west, it, yeah. and then that on yeah. the uh, east. Okay, does anybody have any issue with that? This one, the one on the front. This, yeah. 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 That one? That one. And that one. And that one. And that one becomes sure. Yeah, yeah same, same thing. Yeah. Work signage. The exception is required. Matt? My, I, my only, well, I don't say only concern. One concern maybe is, you know, the welcome sign off of 41. It's right as you finish turning in. I don't know if it makes sense to push that back a little bit into the site. It just seems like if you're making that turn, you know, you're coming off of 41, if it wants to be just, a little, you know, as you're kind of looking straight instead of as you're still turning to catch the information. Can we put it on this side? Do you see the one I'm right Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, I just, we've been, we've made a, a lot of a couple of signs, I think, like the meathead sign, you know, and it's caused some, at oh, least yeah. when I come out of there, it's yeah. like that thing really blocks traffic. So I'm worried about blocking traffic and then actually reading, being able to read the signs, you know. That's a good point. It just seems like maybe if that's a little bit further into the site, maybe someone's not slowing down or, you know, to read it or. Was that the 41 sign? Yeah, the, the welcome about? sign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just maybe it's more on the straightaway instead of at the end of the curve. And then just making sure, and I think you're fine, but again, you're, you know, when you're entering onto 41, you know, people going at least 10 over speed limit, just we want to make sure that the signage and the plantings aren't disrupting that view of cars, you know, oncoming traffic right, as you sure. exit out. So that's part of the landscape, you know, just make sure the plantings are in compliance. Um, and I don't have a problem with the number of, it's such a large lot, you know, it's sometimes to relegate these or regulate these <laughs> a number of directional signs, sometimes it's a complex site and you need a little bit more than three signs to, I don't have a problem with the number. I'm, I'm actually looking through the information here. Um, I think I would, I would actually prefer that on the opposite side of that drive. On the um, okay, yeah, south side of the drive. Yeah, that'd be great. I mean, that'd be that's better. not impeding any visuals. And, yeah, 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 and more of a kind of you're hitting it right. You're looking at it as you turn right, in, yeah. kind of a thing. Yeah. Directional signs. Anybody have any questions on on those the flag signs? This is more appropriate for welcome sign and directional signs. So you have put, uh, put all that together. Oh, that's up there. Yeah, that's. We'll put those two together. Yeah, put these. Mm -hmm. Move it like back here. Yeah. Well, did you mean over here? Well, at first, yeah, but if it's directional, it probably works better there. Nice. Uh, another option for yep. that welcome yeah. sign is is uh, we're able to combine the information that's on that directional sign yeah, that'd be great. and move it back yeah. maybe to the front of the parking spots. Perfect. Yeah. And then that next directional sign on the um, northeast corner of that little curved sidewalk on the northeast corner of the building. Yes. I'm not sure what that, who's going to read that. Uh, that's actually for people who are entering the property from the industrial park side. Because to get to the service okay. entrance, you need to go around the building. Okay, so that's more, okay, I'm sorry. So you're reading it as you're coming in. You're reading it, in, in essence, on the back side. From west to east? Yes. I see. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you.
So how many of these 87 inch high, oh 80, okay, never mind. So you don't have any flag signs. I don't believe so. Or is that the one that's here? Oh, the promise? No, that's the. That's so these the ex exemptions one. here are because they're too big by eight inches. Um, right. Yep. Right, yeah, by. By 18, uh, and this is not well, th this no. is uh, square feet, I the promise on this. area and, and square feet. On so, this, this is okay. six square feet allowed. It's their 25 and 24 square feet size signs. So, on the packet that you have, the signs that are highlighted with red, right, are the ones that are part of the project. Anything else on the signs? Does everybody understand what they are and where they are? Because there's, there's a number of them where there's, there, there's over the allowance, and like I think Matt said, this, you've got to be able to drive around and know where you're going. Well, we're getting rid of one directional sign. Yeah. So that. And what I'd call the mini monument signs. There's, there's more. There's more of those, and they're larger than a. So those are going to require an exemption. Are these all double-sided? The way they're. they're not, not all of them, no. Like for instance, that welcome sign that has a direction behind it is one-sided. Okay. And, so and one of the um, ground signs is kind of a unique sign for the franchise. It, that's that promise sign, which is in the um, upper yeah. right hand corner of the property. So when this goes before the village board, some of these numbers have to change. If they're, they're being combined. Um, right. Oh, yeah. I'll make that, yeah. that change, okay. right, for the ones that are being combined. Yep. Anybody have any issue with any of these? So the welcome sign and the promise sign are going to be combined with the, the on-site informational signs. Is that right? No, the promise sign will stay as drawn. Yeah. Down uh, on the entrance off of 41, there's a welcome sign right at the end of the radius there. Then a little bit to the left of that, there's another directional sign. Those two will be combined into one sign and move back to either where the directional sign is or, or probably a little in front of that first parking spot. But it'll be, it'll be pulled back into the property substantially. By the way, there's a laser pointer in that little black thing if you want to use it in the upper right, too, if that helps. In, in which direction is, I'm just curious, the um, vehicle premise sign, is that facing into the lot or onto the highway? 
facing into the lot. Okay, so on the back side, is that just a blank, or is there something on that back side? I don't believe there's anything on the back side. So yes, I think it is blank. Just plans are around it. But that's pretty tall, right? How seven feet? Yeah. Is that the plants around? Twenty-one hundred oh, millimeters. <laughs> <laughs> it does seem like it'd be nice if the back of the promise sign had something on it, like really not facing anywhere. One of the leapers, or There's, thank you for visiting. Thank you or, for right. Well, yeah, yeah I, you're never going to see it. I mean, no, it's, you're not. We could put the logo on the yeah. top of the back of it. Yeah, it might be nice just to have something. I mean, just so. Yeah. But I, I really don't. People are going to see it so quickly. I mean, it's. <laughs> run in parallel to the street I don't know how but I think it is I, we usually don't ask for more but that might be one or it makes sense to put just something on there just in case but. what's left Landscape? Yeah. Yeah, landscape. We got tens right here. Although yeah. landscape looks pretty good to me. Keep going. Actually, no, it's the first first drawing. question on the uh, it's more honeysuckle that lines the, the property basically and what we you know in, in, in order to somewhat hide the the parking lot from the surrounding is that going to be big enough without being too big to create a security issue it's very dense it looks like yes there's currently that uh, kind of landscape buffer on the existing facility and they're they're typically pruned about four or five feet annually. Well, that's big enough. I think. Okay. You? Jordan Jordan is correcting me that they're three feet. Okay. Well, that's hood length, hood height. <laughs> <laughs> Are you next to Evergreen? Is that is that where the uh, the site is? Between, I'm trying to think now. There's. It's between Chevy and then blank and then evergreen. I don't know if it's evergreen. There's, so the, j immediately to the south. north is the uh, small office building, single floor. And then to the south is um, it's a um, commercial building, a white commercial building with, with, with um, like the entrances are all on the all north the and south. Yeah. Okay. And then on the, on the east side, it's, it's uh, I think garages and like a Kind of a okay. courtyard. I just all of a sudden, I had drawn a blank where it is. Is that the storage <laughs> so the facility that had the hmm? green Wagner storage? That's the one. It's that's not really it. storage. It's uh, uh, okay. it's like north of the office warehouse. Okay, right. So okay. Stuff. Well, let's keep Inclusive. going on this yeah. thing. Anybody have any issues with the landscaping? Yeah, I like your building. Yeah. I no. I like the simplicity of it. Yeah. Yeah, our main guy isn't here, so we're, we don't sound as smart as we usually do. A, a significant yeah. change from the existing facility is we, we took out parking lot trees. Yeah. We have a tremendous problem with debris from the trees landing on the paint finish of the cars and causing damage. So for longevity of the automobiles, we would prefer to keep it in the perimeter. Any other comments? No. 
I mean, my thing is, you know, just, and I don't, you know, just minimizing heights at your intersections, which I think you are. So that's, and no tall grasses, no prairie grasses, right, at the right. entrances. I suspect over time, the depression in the front will start to pick up cattails like the existing depression does. But those are four or five feet below grade to begin with. Yeah. Neil? No more comments. I mean, have we I gone through? anyone from the public is here on this item. Oh, yeah. Well, since this is a public hearing, does anybody out there have anything to say about what they've at least heard? You can't see it all. Uh. <laughs> okay. okay. Are we ready to entertain a motion? I think so. We got all the info here? Um, well, we'll see who's going to make the motion, then I'll. Yeah. Check with us. Yeah, that's. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's move? I, I can try it. Okay, you try. See if we can get it's a pretty long list of stuff. <coughs> yeah. So I'll uh, approve as submitted with the following exceptions. Um, one on the west side elevation, that you include the or provide the strip windows as presented to the board. Um, with the possibility of some type of sunshade over those windows. And then two, that the um, we keep the uh, Kelvin to 4,000, which is approved by Jaguar. But, and three, that we combine the um, entry sign, the welcome sign with the directional sign at, at the um, Southwest entrance off of 41. Southeast. Oh, Southeast, sorry, yep, thank you, Southeast. Not that I wanna add more no. layers to. Keep playing, yep. The yep. horizontal uh, cedar then, on yep, the garbage was, disposal. Right. And then number four, thank you, um, is that the um, uh, garbage enclosure um, will be revised to have horizontal cedar that will be painted or stained to match one of the finishes on the building. Did I miss any other comments that we had? I think you got everything I, I can think it. of. Yeah. I'll second it. Second it, okay. We have most to second, any, any other discussion then? We just, okay. Then we do a roll call. Uh, Member Kerouac? Aye. Member Waymeyer? Aye. Member Dahlman? Aye. <coughs> Aye. Okay. The recommendation passes. Well, thank you very much. Sure. No problem. Thank you. Looking forward to Thank you. As soon as possible. As soon as possible. Our, uh, our corporate schedule has construction starting June, July. So pretty pretty quickly. Okay. Great. you got to find Great. a place for that leaper, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Get to this. We didn't even talk about it. Sure. Okay, next is a public hearing to review site plan to construct, uh, oh, wrong one. Review site plan for building alterations and site improvement to construct a community pub of Lake Bluff at 101 East Scranton. Um, since this is a, again, to con uh, another public hearing, uh, did you guys stand up when I said everybody swear in before? Yeah. You did? No. No, okay, I, well, didn't. okay, here we go again then. Uh, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and the testimony you're about to give, if so, please say I do. I 
do. Well, Thank you. And actually, we should include anybody who wants to speak on this matter in the swearing in, too. Okay. So, anybody else? Would that include you then, Bob? Okay. <coughs> Did you say I do? You heard it. I do. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> We're less than formal. All right. Scott, take it away. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, good evening. My name is Scott Stradiff, and I will be presenting this petition tonight on behalf of the property owner, Lawrence Property, LLC. The primary intent of this petition is to seek approval for the adaptive reuse of an existing vacated bank drive through on the south end of the Lawrence property and to repurpose this structure as an authentic English pub and garden. The Lawrence family purchased this Scranton Avenue building known as the John Griffith Store Building in 1979, opening their family business, Lawrence Interiors, that same year. Many improvements have been made over the years, and in 2003, the building became individually listed on the National Register of Historic Places. In 2004, Lake Forest Bank and Trust became a tenant and added a drive-through facility, as seen here in this photo. In 2014, the bank vacated the premises and subsequent efforts to secure a tenant who could utilize this drive through have been unsuccessful. Lawrence Property LLC wishes to redevelop the abandoned drive through area for use as an English themed pub and garden serving both food and drink. We believe that both the, the design of the pub and garden area will contribute positive, positively to the businesses in the Central Business District by redeveloping what, what is currently a vacant and underutilized space. Mr. Lawrence is uniquely qualified for this venture as he has spent the past 30 years traveling throughout England studying the rich history of the public house and is also a collector and reseller of English furnishings. The Lawrence family has been instrumental in other like projects locally such as the original renovation to the Deer Path Inn. Mr. Lawrence provided his expertise in similar fashion and was able to obtain landmark designation for this property as well. I'm gonna just show you a few photos of the existing drive-through area as it exists today. And this is uh, standing on the village property. This is looking down Scranton Alley. Back towards Village Hall. And then this is on the east side. In addition to the proposed improvements, I'd like to spend a little time communicating the proposed modifications to the parking on and around this property. Here is the proposed new parking plan prepared by Black Engineering. The proposal is to eliminate the street access for the existing bank drive-through alley shown here, and convert this to a landscaped pedestrian walkway starting at the public sidewalk. This will open up opportunity to install three additional much needed parking spaces along Oak Avenue as shown. The proposed design will not adversely impact the surrounding character. The proposed design exemplifies an understated historic character and uses high quality traditional materials and details. The design is consistent with and enhances the existing historic building and is influenced by English Tudor architecture. The wood timbering will be enhanced at the bay windows and entries, and the proposed exterior is composed of natural materials such as common brick and heavy timber detailing. The windows are metal clad with lead mountains, and the roof at the bay window is lead coated copper. On February 19th, the PCZBA approved the special use permit for this project. Uh, the meeting, however, was met with some opposition from the property owner to the west of the subject property regarding the door exiting onto Scranton Alley. Uh, Mr. Lawrence wishes to be a good neighbor, so in response to this, he has con converted this element to an inoperable door and has relocated the primary access door and vestibule to face the south, as shown here in this elevation. This is also reflected in the proposed floor plan, which you have in your packets. In an effort to best communicate the proposed exterior architecture for this project, we have prepared an animation walk around, which I will show you now in this short video. I think. Mr. 
This will just kind of take you around the whole, kind of a walking around the whole project as proposed. This is the west elevation. So where that, that kind of brick accent there is where the relocated entry door would go. And this is walking underneath the existing canopy. This is walking back towards the garden area. back to the west. So with that, we hope this board has a clear understanding of the intent for this project. We are excited about the positive impact this project will have on the downtown district. Uh, thank you for your thoughtful consideration. Thank you, Scott. Matt? Um, can we, you know, we get a letter, right, from your, the same, uh, before we do that, yeah, let's look at what we've. Well, I'm trying to j I just get to what we're, what exceptions we need to review. I guess. Well, I don't want to do that yet because okay. uh, I think this has gone through the ZBA. I don't want to. I don't want to cross over their boundaries. But Bob's going to get a chance to to say his piece when we look at the overall picture. I don't right. want to get into things of ownership and. Uh, that's really not our bailiwick right now. Okay, great. We, we can't settle those things. Yeah. Uh, unless we and, can. And as I guess far as what Scott just showed you. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's lovely. I mean, I think the one concern would be because you, is it the understanding that on that west elevation where you have that recessed beautiful door, that's stained, but it's just inoperable? Is that? It's inoperable, yeah. Yeah, so I can see that being a frustration. <laughs> I mean, it's, I, I think it's a good neighborly gesture, Yeah. but it's also gonna be, that's where people are, you know, a newcomer will probably try to use that. So I can see there being a lot of jarring on that door. So it's a tough one, maybe, I, I totally, and I appreciate what you're doing. I'm not trying to say don't do that. I, I'm just not sure. Maybe there's a little gate or some, something to keep people from like entering that vestibule, just thinking that that's an entry. I'm, I don't know. Well, there's a, yeah, there would be a solid wall on the other side of that. that I, and the, the, I, the concept is, is it kind of, it kind of supports the brand of the concept for the, for the restaurant. Yeah. Um, just sort of. Uh, yeah, I love everything about your door. I just, I know that it's, uh, you know, having a false door seems, if there is some way to indicate that it's not an active door, just so you don't have people like trying to actively use it. If there's something, something, just a cute, a cute little thing, something on there, just so it's not a, something simple, some English script, something. Mm -hmm. Everything else is beautiful. You know, we tried to do something similar with the other banks for 10 minutes and I'm very jealous that you're approaching it. I mean, it's a lovely reuse of that property. Um, yeah, there's, I have no, I mean, architecturally, it's, it did a great job, Scott, and it looks great. It's a great reuse of the building. Julie? Are there any concerns with uh, having the new building go right up to the edge of the easement there? Because that's an easement. I mean, it goes right up to the edge, but that's fine, right? I mean, we already have the outside of the canopy is on the easement, so there must have been some sort of variance to right. that at some point yeah. in time, right? So this isn't an issue to go right up to the edge of the, yeah, in case there's any so. issues within that easement. Okay. You and can't encroach the 10-foot easement, but okay. yeah. Um, will there be 
uh, seating. It looked like there was a counter on the edge there against those windows, and I know this is just a rendering. Is there going to be seating and dining that's happening in the underneath the I think more canopy and on the outside of the garden? I think more standing in the under the canopy area. I'm, I'm not sure there's going to be any seating there. So that's just like a drink, kind of a drink ledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one little ledge okay. there. Not yet. And then when, if you go back to earlier in the rendering or the one, so there, the, this greenery that's all in here, is that part of this plan too, or is that? That's existing. Okay. So, and the intent would be to any, any uh, disturbance of any materials on this side of the building would get replaced with either an equal or approved uh, superior product. Um, but the, it's just carrying the existing, uh, pavers that are there today. All that curb work is existing. It's modeled a little cleaner. We yeah, eliminated the weeds. Yeah, so that little, right. this little uh, planting area exists. And this is, a, this is actually a sidewalk that connects to the village property here. And in the rendering, we're showing this curb eliminated right here, and then this infilled with the same brick paver. But it, if, you know, it could, it could also just be replaced, if there's any disturbance of that asphalt, mm -hmm. you could also just replace that with asphalt too. Kind of a, not as nice of a finish, but. I have a, I'm sorry, are you done? I forgot a question. No, I, I might have something else. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Um, the only signage I see is on, um, Scott, on your elevation here. Um, the proposed south elevation, is that correct? Over the three, over that entry, are there other signage on this building? Uh, just a brass plaque by the door. Okay. Um, so that's your only sign? Or be that's very, un very understated is okay. the intent of the, you know, okay. kind of, you have to work hard to the figure out the place. Where is the garbage for this? Is it part of the building somewhere else? Yeah, it'll okay. be. Um, okay. I think right in this area here. And then and this um, is the service door. With the rooftop unit that's being relocated, that's just for um, for air circulation. It's not. Is it kitchen exhaust? Uh, any kitchen exhaust would be, uh, the proposal is to do it through this chimney that the fireplace is. So that would be shared with any venting that we would do with the kitchen as well. And then the rooftop a a uh, AC condensers would be, that are currently down here, would be relocated up to the upper part of the existing building. They're behind that little fence, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're right. They're right in here. Good. Anything else, Joe? No, I don't have anything else right now. Neil? Mm -hmm. I have two questions on on this rendering. Okay, that's up there. What is the red box? It is an antique English uh, an antique head. English letter box, uh, basically a post office box, and we can move that to the very back as well, or just delete it from the thing. If it, it doesn't matter one way or another to us in design, I guess the. I don't have a concern with where it's located. It, it wouldn't actually be used? Yeah, it probably would. 
We asked the post office, they said as long as you have a mail drop, otherwise you don't even have to have a mail drop, you can have all of it go to a P.O. box, they, they don't care. So we may even do that. Yeah, the, the other question is, I agree with the comments on the on the wood door, I'm not so sure if, it, if it's not a working door that I like even having it there. I could see it being bricked like, like some of the rest. Uh, some other type of pattern with the brick, something other than a door. The other question I have is, um, and I don't recall where this is in the in the in the uh, the layout, but on the on the uh, Scranton's on uh, not Scranton on the side of the building, there was um, a flower arrangement, not flower a plant arrangement, put in by a Boy Scout last year. Does that go, or is that still there? Is that here? No, that's up here. Uh, nah, it's on the other side. It's behind the church. It's on, it's on the other side, on the street side. Yeah, it's actually on the church property. It's on the church property. Yeah, the church property. Yeah. It is. Okay. Okay. Let's go to the Other than that, I like what. Would that remain? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's on the the property. It's right on, on their the, property. Uh, the community church. It is. Right. Okay. Other than that, I like what you're doing, and uh, anxious to see the comments on the other issues. Okay. All right. Well, I think it's a, a wonderful insertion there that uh, that you did. Um, and I'm just wondering if, you know, I, the door doesn't bother me so much if it looks more like a wood panel thing uh, as opposed to a door. You know, no panel hardware on it or anything Eliminate like that. Eliminate all the hardware. Just, yeah. And, and I just wonder if you need the light then. The light kind of says, well, here's, here I am. Here's the door. Uh, that would be the only light on that side of the building. So it'd be just our open side. Mm. What's that? It's the open side. Wow. The only time we. I mean, there's. Out. I think there should be for just for safety. There should be some illumination on that side of the building, whether it's one lantern or an up light or. I mean, something. gas lamps. I don't. You know, they don't throw off that much light. We could have a can up underneath there too. But um, basically, that light serves as a purpose to say we're open too. We have it on when we're open. If we're not, it's off. There's no open sign. There's no sign, you know, for the name really. We just thought it was a great architectural element to have above the doorway as well. You know, so when the concern came up about that being an operable door at the zoning meeting, um, we said we could have it as an emergency door only day when we went over and spoke with uh, the fire chief David Graff and uh, Mike Vogt and uh, you know basically they said you have enough exits and uh, so we're fine we just decided to leave the, uh, the elements there and just have it as a non-operable door most people I think can figure it out there have been a number of properties like this with the uh, you know hidden entrances things like that and they figured If it's a wood panel with no hardware on it, I think people could figure it out pretty easily. Yeah. They have a door knocker, and then it's a center door pull is what's on there, that black yeah. uh, knob in the center is a English door pull. Okay, anybody else have any, any other questions? Okay, so, I know Bob's got some things, some comments, but uh, maybe you had a, you wanted to make a statement. And if you would come up here and. So I'm Denise Petticord. I live at 56 East Center Avenue, which is the eight building townhouse uh, complex that is directly located next to this. And so uh, we do have some questions. Uh, I know you brought up the ledge. And so we're wondering on the ledge, like, is that intended to stay? Is that an area where people can stand out and, and drink? Or what is the intention with the ledge? It wouldn't be a standing area in the back, but it would be an area where they could walk out the door and stand underneath their Okay. Because there is, I had expressed this at the board meeting, there's concern around the level of noise that would be created from, from the pub. And so 
if there's an outdoor standing area, then I feel that leads to more ability to, for congestion and people to stand outside and to be making more noise. So I have a concern around that. Um, on the, uh, what is the intention with the walkway? I know you've talked about this direct area here, but you haven't talked about the walkway area to get from where the parking spots that you're adding are to the actual pub. So speaking about the three parking spots on the pool? Yes. So you said you would block off that, kind of the rest of the drive-through? Right, right. You, you would block off. that off, but you don't have anything on the rendering for that on what you would do with that area. Yeah, so this, uh, this would essentially remain the same, except uh, the there would be consideration <coughs> to do uh, more of a paver walk. Uh, we haven't really, that, that'll come out in the design development, but um, there's an existing hedge here. Um, I, I believe it's a row of arborvita and they're, that are about eight feet tall. And there's an existing fence here that's kind of dilapidated kind of falling apart, so this would all get replaced. Um, the fence is going to get replaced? The fence is going to get replaced, okay. yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then um, just probably some simple ground cover and, uh, and, and, a, and a pedestrian walkway and maybe some down lighting on the path um, just to kind of illuminate and for safety. I have a question about that fence because right now it's... We made it come up. Because it has a lot of privacy right now because it, you know it, it will be a noise barrier as well so I'm wondering what kind of fence is it gonna be the same exact fence because it's pretty tall I think that fence is nice it gives us privacy in our that's where our carport is for the building and it will be a, a noise barrier as well as far as like I don't I want to make sure the fence isn't just gonna be like an open fence and if you could just give us your name also for the oh, minute. Our bliss. Okay. And we, t we talked about this a little bit in the, in the PCZVA as well, and I think we're open to, you know, doing some sort of uh, an acoustical deadening product that might be incorporated into the fence that would help with, uh, with the sound a little bit. We would Gary Lawrence again. We would definitely keep the same height. I mean, if you said we had to go higher, I'm sure we could do that too. But, yeah. yeah. That would be really nice. Yeah. Yeah. We can keep a, get a better sense at the bottom. Yeah. And we Jerry? did. We also reduced the, uh, the or limited the hours for the, any of the outdoor spaces. That nothing could be used after 10 p.m. And um, there's also a noise ordinance in place. So there's there's a number of. Uh, things that hopefully will prevent people from being too. This loud. is a, a pretty small place. It's so a small, I'm wondering it's a small what place. is the occupancy of it? Um, Nine. Well, let's see. The, the outdoor seating you're talking about. I'm inside. talking about the inside seating. You know, oh, the inside. Yeah. Which I think is about to take. Forty. Well, that many. Forty or forty-four, something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Six, Sixteen in the bar. And Okay. How many in the dining area? He said about 30. Oh. I got to pull out my jury to take a look at that. Okay. We, we've had various layouts of the interior, and some of that has changed because we moved the vestibule from the west side mm -hmm. to the south side. Um, so it depends on, you know, whether it depends somewhat on our procurement of antiques, you know, like if we have a five foot bench or a four foot bench, we probably need it. Do we deal with parking, or has that been nope. talked about? The PCCBA no, has no question. Very good. Okay, thank you. Yep. Just curious. Thank you. So what's the answer? I didn't hear. The the um, plan commission and, and zoning board um, made a uh, a recommendation in favor of granting a variance on on parking. 
So that's, that's part of their uh, special use permit and variance package that'll okay. go to the village board. Um, we, I mean, those spots are on village property, so they don't technically count as, as their parking. It's open to the public, but it, it is, they are agreeing to create them as part of the, as part of the deal where they get the parking variance. Yep. Anything from either of you? Any more? Yeah. Um, so if you, where the walkway is on what would be considered the west side, so I don't know if that is township property that that lines up against you had shown one picture where it's there's a curb on that side yeah so it would be this area right here like there's a little there's a there's sidewalk a here mm -hmm. but then there's this little bit of space it's probably six or eight feet right there mm -hmm. and that's just opened and I wondered about the possibility, I don't know who, who is the owner of that property, if there's a possibility to extend the fence into that little space as well. So it would be an additional support of privacy for the residents of the condo building, as well as another buffer on sound. Yeah, the, so the village owns south of the driveway and then the driveway going north is, is the Center Avenue Partners, so they're private owners. So. Um, you're, you're talking about putting it west of the the brick wall for the drive-through there? Is yes. Where you're talking about, yeah. So, I mean, depending on exactly where you're talking about, if you set it a little bit to the south, it'd be on village property, or, or to the north, it's on other private property owner. And there's um, also a sidewalk to Village Hall back there. Yeah, right, there's a sidewalk going through. I, I'm not sure that it would really do much for noise for the condo building, though, because of where it would be. It's kind of, would be kind of parallel to... You know, it's not, it wouldn't really be between the condo building and the and the the people, though. I don't think. Yeah, I think it would be. be it would add to the sound protection because uh, that open walkway is right there. The entrance is right there now. It's on the west. The entrance is on the west. Okay. It's on the south, but it's toward the west end of the building. I see. And so then that's more directly into the open area and not the covered area. And so I think there will be people that will be gathering in that area and it would be then a barrier between that space and people that have windows and doors and patios that are on the west side of our U-shaped building. Right, I see what you're saying. Yeah. There's one that's closer up of it that you were there? showing. Here, this one. So it's right where this, mm -hmm. at the very You're talking about right here? Picture. Yeah. That's pretty far past the condo. Yeah, the village hall is right on the, when you look yep. the other way. Yeah. No, but if you go back. Oh, village village hall is right there. But if you, there was one where you could really see the built, our building. Mm, okay. Huh. That, that, one. that one. That one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. So behind so those bushes. There's another fence there too, it looks like. Yeah. So right this there. is, this fence continues down and it's, it's all for all of our units, this fence right here. So. So the entrance to the bar, the pub, is basically going to be right here. And so then people will be entering and exiting. And if they're standing in this area especially, then this is an area where we could get some additional sound break because our windows and patios are all right along here. And we even have, we have two residents that have balconies. What are the hours going to be on this, Gary? After much talk with the uh, PCZBA, we came up with Monday through Friday, 
noon till 11 p.m. Saturday, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. That's for English football. Then 2 p.m. to midnight. Sunday, 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. And the outdoor area would close at 10 p.m. all days, which would be in line with, I'm not sure about the other restaurant properties, Ron. I do know it's in line with Prairie Espresso. Okay. Well, we can't really deal with noise abatement. Um, I'm not sure that a fence, extending a fence would, would be of any value, but the people are gonna gather if they gather, and I can't imagine why they would, you're, you're not gonna have eating or drinking outside the door, I wouldn't think. Uh, maybe, maybe somebody might be having a beer while they're waiting for their table. That's what I thought when oh, I first I, saw the rendering. Know, but you know, any laws that deal with, you know, much like Prairie Espresso or Innovasi or Mabry Public House, any of those, if it gets too noisy or whatever, they put a kibosh on it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would just say that those businesses don't have a private residence so close to them or so many private residences so close to them. Espresso does right above it. Yeah, all the apartments. There's an apartment that's in our building that we were co applicants to allow them to go in there. So, you know, we agreed with that 10 p.m. Yeah. at that point. Yeah. I recognize that. I think there is a bit of a dis difference between uh, uh, someone that's renting and someone that owns their property. So if you rent, you have an option to move if it's too loud for you. If you own, you don't have many options. Well, you do. You have an option to complain, and you've got Gary Lawrence here, who's been a resident of this town for a long time, and he wants to continue to be a good neighbor. So I, th I think there's a little bit of a different thing here, and that's just my own opinion. I probably shouldn't be voicing it, but. Uh. Okay, is there an option to not have the ledge outside of the main door? So my last question then is around the moving of the AC condensers onto the roofs, uh, or onto the roof. Can you give me any information or insight around those and kind of the, are they a constantly running, you know, level of noise, like what would be expected there? Because again, they'll be close to our building. Yeah, I mean, I would say if you look at Google Earth, there's probably 30 of them currently in downtown Lake Bluff. Uh, yeah. They're on every single building, but um, and the intention is to put it, there's like a sort of a shed type of addition on the second floor of this building. Um, we would like to go further back um, and you can kind of see it from there. So this is, we would not put them on top of this structure, we put them back here on top of this structure okay. and more and as centrally located as possible on the, on the building. So I think they'll be pretty far away. Okay. Farther away and higher than their current location. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because they're currently right. They're yeah. currently right here. Okay. I think just one. I'm going to be thorough here. One last item, and that is at the. Uh, at the end of the walkway where you're adding the parking spaces. That's the entrance and uh, exit from our carport area. I'm concerned about increased foot traffic and visibility uh, kind of pulling in and out because adding those parking spots is gonna make it more narrow for us and just with increased foot traffic, I'm concerned about the visibility. Okay.
Yeah, so this, obviously this, this dimension wouldn't change, which is the access in and out. There might be an opportunity if these are built to provide a little relief right here in this little section here mm -hmm. for turning radiuses and stuff. Yeah. I didn't know about adding like those blind spot mirrors at all. If they're for the, you mean for the walkway here? Yeah. Or for the sidewalk? Yeah. yeah. I'm just concerned from a safety standpoint of if there's increased foot traffic mm -hmm. and we're pulling in and out, I wouldn't want to. Yeah. To do that if necessary. I do know there is that low three foot fence right at the very start. Mm -hmm. Then it jumps up. We had a higher fence at that point. Right. So would you keep, keep it that way? Or would you oh, yeah. That was probably that would keep that a lower yeah. fence. Oh, yeah. okay. Yes, I think that helps oh. anybody walking or driving. Yeah. 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 Y
As adjacent property owners of Lawrence Petition, our property is directly affected by the proposed use and improvements requested by the petition. In general, we're supportive of the use of the food service restaurant serving alcoholic beverages, but have concern about some of the details. The primary objection is pedestrian vehicular ingress and egress onto and across CAP property from doorways, benches, open spaces, outdoor lighting, and any other signage or future signage requested by the petitioners. The concern is the request will cause CAP to incur liability and parking problems. So as our neighbor, the condo owner, spoke about people gathering outside, what's to stop them? There has been no effort to put a fence or to limit the pedestrian traffic to keep it onto their property. Somebody gets drunk, falls off the bench, and falls onto CAP property. Why do I incur liability for that? Okay, the pedestrian, okay, I'll, I'll get into that in a second. The petition indicates a doorway with the exterior light above a bay window and a bench on the west wall of the property. The implication here is that a doorway is proposed or alluded to in the future. Who's to stop anybody from making that a doorway in the future? Also, in terms of numbers of exits, they said the occupancy was 44 or 45. You can have a single exit for an occupancy up to 50. Okay. Um. This will encourage pedestrian traffic across CAP property and use the CAP parking lot by the restaurant bar patrons, creating a problem for CAP tenants. So we've already received uh, parking variations, uh, allowances, and worked out deals. I had a discussion with Drew today about some parking issues that were coming up. Don't you think that this, I know this isn't about the use that uh, plan commission and uh, ZBA spoke about use, but it's in the details here, the site plan of where you're encouraging people to do, where, where my encouragement would have them to focus on the east and to design it all so that it looks to the east and put a barrier. You don't have to touch the ground. You don't have to touch the utilities into the east, but a fence, a gate that is mounted to the inside of the brick wall would easily do that. Okay. Anyone wanting to use the bench or door shown by the petitioners on the west wall would have to access those from CAP property. They do not have an easement for it. The Lawrence's petition includes 11 renderings illustrating the proposed design. Seven of these renderings illustrate paving and landscape improvements on CAP property. It's important to know that Lawrence's have not leased any CAP property or even discussed the improvement shown in the current petition with CAP to reach agreement on the ingress, egress, landscaping, and paving of CAP property. The petition is misleading. The, it's misleading this board and the village of Lake Bluff by showing improvements that are not owned by the petitioners and not agreed to by Center Avenue partners. Additionally, the renderings do not match the plan location on the doorway under the existing canopy. You saw that in the movie. You can see it on every one of their drawings. CAP is concerned that it will incur increased liability without any benefit from ingress and egress of the restaurant bar units. If a restaurant customer should fall off the bench on a CAP property, I, I said that already, petitioners could contain their proposed use within their property with the fencing or creative barricades. Better yet, work with CAP on our prior discussions to convert the defunct bank through into a new pedestrian walkway with food trucks for our mutual benefit. It's my understanding Gary doesn't like that. Um, what we've tried to do with CAP, uh, and I'm not gonna try to pitch a different idea here because this is their petition, but we've always tried to have something that's more kid friendly. Um, Left Bank and Lake Forest has a uh, hot dog truck. And we thought that reuse of the bank drive through with the hot dog, hot dog truck would be a fantastic use, fantastic daytime use. Lake Bluff is really a middle school community with kids running around and it should be encouraged. And we need uses that are for the non-drinking age, middle school age, kid-centric stuff, 
family-centric stuff. That's what our, our pizza oven is on Friday and Saturday nights when it comes up. So when I put that pizza oven out there, where Pizza John, or uh, Coffee John puts that out there, and it starts smoking, it starts smoking in front of the bay windows that Lawrence's want, who's gonna get complaints, all right? Who was there first? Whose property is it, okay? So why I want to work collaboratively, by design, the introduction of these architectural elements are inviting conflict. There is no easement for the petitioner's proposal or any public use at Scranton Alley. Scranton Alley is owned by Center Avenue Partners and was developed by CAP as a public spirited covered walkway for small scale outdoor themed retail use. During the appro approval process in 2003 and 2004, CAP agreed to a provision for a public walkway to allow pedestrian traffic only from Village Hall to Scranton Avenue as part of the special use permit for bank drive through and restaurant use at 28 East Center. This was never intended to benefit an adjoining property's increased use. With the abandonment of the bank drive through CAP is pursuing abandonment of the public walkway provision to the Scranton Alley and redevelopment of those portions of CAP. So what we're trying to do is come up with a better, bigger idea that's more appropriate. We've had two tenants in the Scranton Alley since 2003, the ice cream lady and now Coffee John. And Coffee John is doing a great job. He's knocking it out of the ballpark. But I can tell you it's been hard just to keep those tenants there and that anybody other, you know, it, it was hard to lease up that space because, because of the pedestrian walkway provision. It alone is a limiting factor in our ability to generate rent on our own property. All right. The Lawrences have other reasonable options using their own property. This property is adjacent to Scranton Oak. No reason they can't use these for ingress and egress. Also, they could probably work out some agreement with Village Lake Bluff they wanted to cut through the south wall of the drive through canopy and ingress egress for Village Lake Bluff property. There are three sides, north, east, and south, available to the petitioners for ingress and egress and their uses. Just to have it open to our property is a bar restaurant. There's gonna be people drinking and smoking on our property. And unless they extend dram insurance or something like that, there will be a problem someday. You, I could not have said it better than have uh, the condo owner come here and tell you about wanting to scream sound from my property. <laughs> it's not our use. Okay. The improvements proposed by the petition create an encumbrance on CAP property, limit the future development options for CAP, and devalue the CAP property. Suggestions to address the issues raised are eliminate the doorway, the bay window, the light fixture on the west wall and replace with a matching small window. Eliminate the bench on the west wall, move to the enclosed portion of the outdoor area, install a fence on the west wall of the drive through canopy, the Santa Avenue partner property line, use, using spanning construction to not interfere with utilities under the pavement. This will limit ingress and egress from the petitioner's property and adjoining property. Provide access through the south wall onto VLB property and realign the VLB walkway at the petitioner's expense. Prohibit signage of any kind that can be viewed from Center Avenue across CAP property. What we're trying to do is limit the ability of somebody to see it and say, ah, public function, I can go across the Center Avenue partner. You know, I can come and go across there. Work with CAP in the future to create a better plan vision for the reuse of the old drive through as a pedestrian walk. That's the end of my comments. Bob, where is your property line? It is exactly the west face of 103 Scranton. 103 Scranton being Florence. So where Scranton Alley archway yeah. reaches over, touches the old bank building, where it touches the brick, the brick face is the Center Avenue partner property line. That's the west west line. This line right here. Okay. Yep. 
you know, read exactly that line is the side of the building. All right. So have you two parties had any discussion over any of this? And that's one question. The well, second, Ron, Ron called Gary and didn't get anywhere. We wrote him a letter, was ignored. I called Gary. He refused to talk about the doorway. I talked about food trucks. He said he didn't want them, said he didn't want to work on, on a cooperative vision. I sent him an email. It's never been returned. And uh, I requested drawings before the meeting and never got them. We're going to be between a rock and a hard place because we can't we can't make any decisions here. Uh, well, you can. Uh, um, you don't have to approve the window. You don't have to approve the doorway, and you can insist that there's some way to limit the use onto their property by use of a gate. That, to me, is site plan review. That that is site plan review and approval. You're also talking about architectural elements. It's not a zoning board that talks about a bay window. It's not a planning board. They talk about use. We have supported the use. It seems to me that when you, you talk about he's got a lawyer and you've got a lawyer, you're never going to get to an agreement that way. Lawyers Neil, make that's, money by that's, not making agreements. Neil, that's... So I'm, I don't understand why the two of you can't get together and, and either work something out. And the second thing is... If you want a fence there, why don't you put one in? We, we could. And, yeah. and when I put the fence in, well, well better yet, um, Bonk was approved, um, a new DeRossier um, cafe, right? Yeah. Our site plan, uh, you know, we moved the dumpsters out of the area that the, the wood-fired pizza uses. But by approved site plan, that's a dumpster area. Could you imagine the grease bin and the dumpster as it's been being right next door <laughs> to the Lawrence's pub? I mean, looking out at that. I mean, you know, we're going to need additional trash for Bonk. Okay, so what you can do is you can start to see the problems that are evolving by a not cooperative, a not well thought out plan. You haven't worked with your neighbors, you haven't brought a master plan through, and yet you just have not, you know, it's nice looking, but 98% of your images, 90% of your brand is the Center Avenue partner property, not your own. Should turn it around. May Focus I on the east at some point and block like it to. off to the west. I think you had your chance, Gary. Not in response. No, I think to you, we need Bob. to hear a response. But again, I'm I'm not so sure that we're ready to say the bay window goes. Or I mean, to me, if you want to put a, a, a gate up there, that's that's your prerogative. Um, May I make a few comments? Yes. Yeah. Um, I kind of take some offense to what Bob said at the end, and knowing the fact that. Uh, we have discussed this project. Number one, um, both Bob and Jim LaDuke were aware of the project more than a couple of years ago. Lawrence Property hired Ruggles Architecture at the beginning of this project to come in. They designed it. They knew that the door was being planned for that side, the west side of the project. We brought in Jim LaDuke to give us some general ideas of what the cost might be. He said he needed better plans than that. Ruggles Architecture tightened up some of the plans. They came back. Um, Bob said he, you know, it, it's helpful, gave me a rough idea, but said, you know, we really won't know the total until we really see tight plans. At that point, we said, um, you know, let's hold off then for a while, and then we started working with Scott on this. Um, but to say that we never attempted to work together at any point in time to me is ridiculous. Um, we've always tried to be a good neighbor, even going back to the drive-through era of, you know, 03, 04, 05, whatever, when that was being built, and having the Scranton Alley put in, 
um, you know, to tie in this, as he called it, a covered walkway, but it's not really covered. It just has an iron thing over it that says Scranton Alley that attaches to our building with vines. It looks really nice. Um, and then a couple of years ago, uh, we were co-applicants with them to allow uh, Prairie Espresso to have their, uh, you know, nighttime activities and serve liquor. We were co-applicants for that and agreed with it. So to say we haven't been willing to work with them in the past to me is, you know, kind of a stretch. Um, you know, we have no problem in moving a bench out of the way. Um, you know, we were always under the assumption that this is a public walkway. And to say it's only a public walkway that was designed to go from Village Hall through to Scranton Avenue, I don't totally agree with. Um, it says it's for a non-exclusive use, which means it doesn't, it's not exclusive to Lawrence's, it's not exclusive to Center Avenue, even though they own the property. Ruggles Architecture designed the whole project and as part of that project is the first lane of the drive-through, the second lane, all the way next to the building for four air conditioning units, but most importantly is the fact that there's a walkway that goes east-west underneath our drive-through. Now all these years that that's been there, we've had insurance on our building that has covered people walking from his property, even if they've had too much to drink at Prairie Espresso possibly. They've walked onto our property. And I would assume that he's had enough coverage to cover people like Inavasi employees that park over on Oak and decide to walk through our property, or people just in general that walk back and forth from the gazebo to the library all the way down the alleyway. So I think that, that has always been covered. Um, a couple more points here. Um, I've discussed access and egress. As far as the food trucks, um, Bob had mentioned to me in a phone call that, uh, you know, he thought it was a great idea. That's his right to think it's a great idea if that's what he and uh, Center Avenue wish to have on their property. We do not wish to have that on our property. We were approached by the fellow that uh, has the uh, pizza truck out there to try to do something with, you know, underneath our awning at one point. We just simply allowed him to use electricity, you know, whatever, no big deal. Um, our main point why we are against them, and I had brought this point up to a couple people within the village, saying, you know, when, when these trucks get out there, um, it's increased traffic, but it's more traffic, that's great for the village, but who's collecting the sales tax? Who's collecting the receipts? Um, where is this parking going of people that decide to show up for the, all the food trucks? You know, and we're sitting here with our addition and they're saying we have to have parking. We come up with some parking on the street. We're willing to buy passes over at the train station. Um, we don't have a problem with that. But when a bike shop is added and they're talking about adding 28 seats in there, they take over clockworks and they had roughly 30, 34 seats in there. I don't believe in either of those occasions they've had to add parking spaces. So, you know, that's one of the reasons their lot is full, our lot is full, and in both of those instances, um, those uh, variances were already given to Center Avenue Partners and our property at that time too, way back, you know, before those were added. Um, I understand the part that maybe having a coffee place and an ice cream shop, that that's been a difficult time for them to lease, but I don't think it's because of any pedestrian walkway. I think it's because it's maybe 200 square feet with no seating or 250 square feet or whatever. Um, as far as the uh, screening of the sound and Center Avenue being worried about sound coming out, um, I don't know what the concern is there. Prairie Espresso's had musical concerts in here, then a couple times the police have had to come over and shut them down. So to, for him to be concerned about the noise coming from underneath our place and wanting a, a fence and to block the whole thing off when that's already something that is a pedestrian walkway for access and ingress on a non-exclusive basis anyway. That's what we worked our whole premise around in opening this pub and trying to have an, a, a good adaptive reuse of a drive through that is basically useless at this point in time. Um, I think those are my comments. That should sum it up. Thank you.
Yeah. Okay, well, can I respond yeah, just go ahead, a couple Bob. things? Um, our firm did provide some drawings for him, and just like any architect anywhere, we look at many different options for how to provide a solution, one of which was to provide a doorway to which Center Avenue Partners immediately objected to. This is not something that has just come up overnight. It, it's something Gary has known for a very long time that we're opposed to. The, the idea of the pedestrian walkway being a public piece, look, if you want it, you should buy it, or the village should buy it. If you think it's not an easement, it's a condition of a special use permit, it's not described exactly where it belongs or the width or the size of it. And Center Avenue Partners, frankly, we want to turn it east-west. You can see the Lawrences have already started by calling the east portion of the bank drive through the pedestrian walkway. And it's going to be more natural. And it'll be less problematic for us in the very long term. So what my comments really are centered on is preserving the developability for the future of any ideas that we have for our property. And that's all I'm going to say. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Board. OK. I would just like to say that if, if there was any development in their property, perhaps at that point in time, coming to the various boards and going through the channels that are appropriate, they could put up a fence at that point in time if that's approved to do so. And uh, we were aware of that doorway. And at the last meeting, when the attorney uh, called, Bob had asked for some information from us, his site plans and that, we gave him that information. He asked for our rationale as to why we wanted that door. We told him because when you walk in the door, you can go to the right to the dining room, or you walk in and go to the left into the pub. And that's no different than Innovasi changing their doorway from the corner of their property to more mid-block. So when you walk in, you go to the right to the bar, left to the restaurant. So they were aware of that. The only thing Ron came to me with was some drawings of the alleyway, which Prairie Espresso had posted on their Facebook page, trying to have some expansion, or noting that they may want to expand. But there's no plans at this point that was other than the fact that we want to do some landscaping, add more tables, whatever. There, there's no plan in the work that I see within the village. So again, with this walkway, we went ahead and proceeded with our project. I still think this is beyond our purview at this point. Uh, I mean, I, from an architectural standpoint, I, th I think what, what, uh, what we're looking, let me ask a question because I'm, I'm looking at, the, at the, uh, the entryway on the drawings versus the rendering which shows this, you know, double door in, the, in sort of the middle of the, of the south wall, which is it? Yeah, we didn't, uh, this was a late change to the, to the packet in response to the PCZBA meeting, but we didn't reanimate the, uh, so the animation was really intended just to show the intent of the architecture and the textures and the colors. So uh, it's but the really change, in the middle? The or? change you, that you're voting on or, or that you would record would be what's shown in the, in the pencil drawn elevations. Okay, so this, it's, the doorway is closer to the corner. Yeah, so this, this is, an, this is the ad right here. And then this doorway is eliminated and converted to a window. Okay. And this is under the, all under the canopy. All right. So in plan, it, uh, it looks like this. This is the appearance of a door with no, it's a solid wall with no possibility of in and out in this location. And then this would be the, the breezeway. Um, but I think it has to be determined. It's, it's either a pedestrian walkway, as it was originally planned, or it's not. I don't know that you can be discriminatory on which pedestrians are able to use this walkway. People come from North Avenue, and they cut through here, and they go to the cleaners and grab their dry cleaning and come back through. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a central artery in the downtown district. And so um, I guess Center Avenue Partners may have the opportunity, you know, the, the right to put a fence around the entire property and say only patrons of Center Avenue properties are allowed to use this, but I don't think they can single out certain pedestrians and say you can use this and you can't. But what? 
seems like one of the options is to um, go back to the village attorney and ask for an opinion on whether this is a public walkway or not. Well, it's, it's, it's obviously a public walkway, but it's privately owned. I mean, if you took a poll of everybody that lived in the village, they'd probably think it was a public walkway and it was owned by the village. Uh. <laughs> right, but it, it's only relevant to the extent it relates to the appearance we're voting to approve, and I think to a large extent they've, they've addressed those concerns by moving the door. I'm not sure what more we would change. Well, that's why I say you I don't know, think that we point, can, we can sure get into the purview of this. We right, can talk exactly. about the fence along the, the side and, and some of the issues that the that the condo owners have brought up. Well, uh, the shame is that the combination of the, of the properties to attract people through central, the, through the alley and stuff like that. Correct. It seems like a nice use, but it's not compatible with the desires. Yeah, and there's no intention of having any signage that faces west. Um, and there's no intention to change any of the landscaping or walkway on that property. Anything that would be disturbed would be replaced, but there's no intention to change or improve their property uh, in this petition. We were basically saying if after construction or during construction, if this gets approved, should they wish for us to add bricks between our property line and that village walkway, which already is bricks, we would do so. We'd put a ramp in, whatever. If they don't want us to touch it, we'll saw a line through and not touch it. Um, as far as that doorway that is now at their request to not have a doorway there, why can't we use other doorways? We can use other doorways, and we met that request of Center Avenue Partners, um, and we made it a non-operable doorway, but we like the look of it. So now the question is, well, what's to keep them from using that doorway down the road? Well, I suppose that on the other side of it is going to be a brick wall and you can't open it. Yeah. Um, I mean, what would stop someone from having a brick wall here and then knocking a hole in the brick wall to make it a door down the road? I suppose either way you'd have to get approval if all it is is an architectural element to look like a door. But understanding that if your board decides, well, in trying to plan this whole thing and make it work, um, we would prefer you to not have any door, whether it's inoperable, operable, whatever, on that west side. We would be open to that, and we could run that brick wall just straight, and that would give us a little bit more room within the pub anyway. So we're, we would be willing to do that, but I think that would be as far as we go. We're not going to say, let's build the whole wall on the west side brick and get rid of the bay window and the window on the side and everything else. I think that's ridiculous. and. It came out in the zoning board meeting, uh, the PCZBA, that I understand um, that this is a walkway. It's a pedestrian walkway for access egress on a non-exclusive basis. And I believe when we asked the village about that, the attorney nodded and that's what it is. So unless there's some request of that changing down the road, um, you know, we feel this is our best plan for the project. never intended for an adjacent neighbor's increased use. What it says specifically, it's for small scale retail operations. It's something we worked out with Peter Friedman, the attorney at that time, and Kent Street, so that we could get something like Amadeus in Lake Forest, a garden market. And um, the, the garden market people actually didn't like that we would have a <laughs> garden market. Uh, through, you know, Monday through Friday there. So it has been difficult to lease, and the pedestrian walkway is the reason why. And its initial um, uh, concept was for limited, small-scale retail, not for the benefit of adjacent owners. And the non-exclusive use only means that anybody from the public can walk through there. Never intended for increased use or a front door by an adjacent property. And so, Neil, I guess partly to answer your question, you know, at the PCCBA meeting, the village attorneys, uh, I had a representative there, a, a lawyer from the, the village attorney's firm. So. Was, was, by any chance, was Peter Friedman there? Uh, no, I don't think it was Peter. 
I think it was another attorney from his firm. It was a, it's, it's probably firm. Ben Schuster, right? Same firm, from just right. different yeah. lawyers. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Depending on what board it is, right? Right, yeah. But well, I... It's, it's, they've agreed to move the goal of cost of action as long as it reflects the carries on the cost of action. Cost of action. Cost of action. You know, the, the issue is drawing people across our property. The issue is drawing people across our property if you're willing to, you know, make it all a brick wall. And then you also have to understand that anything we put there may obstruct your, your bay window view, including a fence, including a dumpster bin. I mean, I just don't see the, the long-sighted view of this. As an, you know, an architect, you try to plan for everything that might come. You try to plan collaboratively. <coughs> you try to work together with your neighbors. You know, I think the whole idea that if you were to spin it around and you take your bay for an east view, you would internalize it. You would keep more of that activity in the back of your own property. Every view that you've shown, 99% of that focused on Center Avenue partner property. The neighbors who are here talking about it are talking a little bit about the sounds from the drive through on your side, but they're talking a lot about the sounds coming from the Center Avenue partner. Why is your desire to have an increased use my problem? Our desire is simply to have a new use for a drive through that's useless. So is ours. But I don't own your land or your property so if you have and so see a vision to create something there you may do that but we've talked about trying to do something together and what is there to to do together i don't care to run a business on your property you know this is pretty disturbing really yeah mm -hmm. it really is I, i'm really you know it, it's uh, and I, i'm going to say that i I'm okay with the bay window, and if it turns out that it's a bad view because something that, that uh, CAP wants to do, um, then you put some frosted glass in there, or wavy uh, glass that is somewhat obscure, and, and call it a day. But on the, on the if, I mean, if we were really, really smart, we'd look at move, moving about four or five or six parking places out of there and really develop that as a knuckleback there uh, that's all paved and got kind of some of the functions you're talking about, Bob, and some of the temporary stuff that John does. Uh, it's, it's just, it's everybody's putting up a barrier now, and I'm, I'm pretty uncomfortable with saying yes or, yes or no. Uh, and I don't think this board is in the position to do that. No. Anybody disagree or agree? Say so. I agree. I, I can add one point that may be helpful is the fact I believe that when we built the bank in 1994, not the drive through, just the bank property at 103 Scranton where Leggy Bird is, there were never three windows that were on the side of looking out into Scranton Alley. We basically signed something back then that said that we realized that at some point there may be a building built that would cover these windows. And we signed that agreement and saying that. And now, you know, there's a little lip out of some limestone on the wall that, you know, extends into their property. That may be part of it, whatever. So uh, we understood that and still understand that. But right now it's a pedestrian walkway. On the Bluffington side, back in, I want to say about 1987 or so, and I'm sure you've all been in Bluffington's, there are two windows on the east side within Bluffington's that have window blinds on them. Balfour Lanza built his building, which is now the community church, and when they did that, they covered up those two windows. And we just put blinds up instead of keeping them open. It's a decorative feature in there, but if you open up the blinds, you see a cinder block wall. So to your point of, well, if something, a wall is to be built later, or whatever that goes into the pub uh, and covers up the you know, bay window, and the other window, I guess it does. Or maybe we set that back a couple feet so we'd still get light in there. 
Light is what you're after, not a view. Bob's right. You're looking at nothing. Yeah. And you know, don't go to a restaurant. Right. Or if it's look frosted out. glass or a wall or whatever that goes up, if we built it back, you know, a foot and a half or so, the bay window, then they could build their wall all they want, and we'd still get light to come in. It's not that important to have people looking out that window. If four years down the road, it's covered up. What's our options here? Nick? Well, um, approve it, deny it, add conditions, or continue. I don't know what conditions day. to add. Right. I mean, we can add some simple conditions, but. but well, uh, I, I think you're right that our purview here is appearance, and other legal matters are not really our purview. And, you know, what Bob is saying has got some validity to it about, you know, having some liability on his side, that's a bench that you have to move. I mean, everybody in town's got liability as, as long as we've got as much uh, going on, closing the streets and everything else with, you know, people stumbling around on Friday nights. Uh, right. <laughs> there's a lot of liability to go around. Um, I mean, the Scranton Alley is a wonderful thing. You know, thank you, Bob, for doing that to begin with. It was always a great idea. Uh, and it continues to be so. And, and now that there's places to sit, I mean, I've gone up there and had meetings uh, at some of those tables and had a cup of coffee from John. Yeah. Pat, what do you think? Let's get off the dime here, because I, I don't know where, where the dime stands. I, I, I think we cannot just say, yeah, go ahead and do this with you know, changing this and that, and let it go. Uh. Well, I think we can resolve, resolve my, but we can address a couple issues, and some of the issues I don't think it's in our, I mean, we're not here to start adding gates and stuff to, you know. I, I see how we want to isolate one function from another. I don't think that's our, I don't want to do that. I don't want to start setting that precedence for this board to start doing that. Um, I do think with this door, I know it's a lovely door, but yeah, it's such a, it seems like a minor issue, but maybe it's a big issue, you know, and I know with English architecture, symmetry is not a, you know, it's not a symmetrical architecture, you know, to, so simply put another window there throws off the English feel. I, I appreciate that. But maybe that's a gesture that we give just as a, a good neighbor that we eliminate that door and we just do another window like we have on the other side and we or you do something funky like a hearing yeah. grown vic train something like throw yeah it in something yeah i just think you know sometimes we i know i do this i fall in love with the design and it's hard to let go of the idea you know maybe we let go of that and find something maybe even better than a door and a window yeah so maybe we just do something there just eliminate as an issue i mean that's an easy one for me to resolve right so let's eliminate the easy issues and do something else great there, whatever that is. It's a window or, you know, and, but just get rid of the concept of the door. Um, and then that, uh, that little bar rail, you know, which is a bar rail in that little, um, in, in that covered area. I mean, that's what they are. We see them in pubs and bars all the time. That's a minor thing. I think if someone's gonna drink, they're gonna lean up against the wall or they're gonna sit down on a shelf. So I don't think that's gonna stop any activity one way or another. I think it's, it may collect trash, which may be a, you, you may be finding you don't want Prairie anymore. Espresso cups or any, you know, cups on there. So I'm just saying it is a, a, a catcher of other debris also. But I, I think that's such a minor, in the end, a minor item. Um, I do see that um, CAP could at some point build something right in front of all those windows. I mean, I don't know if they would do that, but I, if I could see the potential of, you know, creating a fence or something, right? I mean, can't they just put a fence two inches off of their lot line? The easement might prevent them, I don't know, the details on that. But okay, yeah. but, I don't, you know, I don't know if there's a, and I'm not saying anyone's gonna do that, but I'm just trying to make sure we're not creating something here that nobody wants to be a part of. Um, 
I think those are the only things I'm willing to address is that door and saying that I think the ledge can stay. Um, I do agree that it's, you know, it's a very handsome elevation, but we haven't, you know, there is that whole other half of the project that, you know, probably needs as much love as you've given to that west, which is a nice opportunity. It is a great opportunity to do something great, and you guys have done something beautiful, you know, so I get that, but um, it, it, I can see, I definitely see how your, you know, the adjoining properties have issues with that just because it's such a, a strong draw of like a main entry, you know, that feels like the main entry is from that direction because that's the emphasis you put on the design. And, you know, I think if I walk to your place, I, I know my route I'm taking. That's the route I'm going to take. I'm buy a coffee from John and hop over to, you know, that's, so that's a natural progression of, uh, of space. Um, so I think that's what I'm willing to address here, are, are those two items, without moving into, I think, territory we don't want to start getting into. I agree regarding the door. I'm fine with that. The items that were brought up regarding the fence and making sure that that was a part of the plan, that that's going to be a new fence, I think is a good idea. It was talked about, and it sounded like that was definitely a possibility to at least be the same height, if not taller, and if there were acoustical opportunities. Um, we didn't talk about the fence that runs on the west side of the condo property. We talked about a new fence in another area, but I don't know what the condition is of the fence that's on your property, and because that's not part of your project, I don't know if there's a way to tie that in or to consider that if that's something that would, instead of trying to put a fence on the back of the CAP property to put a fence somehow that would help to, with any of the acoustical nature to help block off that whole corner to give the, you know, any additional sound um, barriers to the, the uh, owners over at the condo association. And then just, you know, when it comes to the, the exhibits and the documents, just w when it comes to, I guess this is where it's the gray area of what's the, what are we, what is allowed with the public walkway versus what's not allowed. And I think that that is important, but I guess it's not really part of our decision. And if CAP can go in and put a fence or they can build a building and somewhere down the line someone's going to have to sign an agreement that you know if you build a building right next door and it blocks all your windows that you're fine with that or you put up a fence um, I think it goes back to how do you you know can you work together to come up with something that's going to work for everybody that's going to make everybody happy but that's not necessarily what we're supposed to be doing either and it kind of goes back to the walkway and what are the rules and is it going to go away and that sort of thing so with you know, if I had to say where I wanted to be supportive would be with the eliminating the door and just making sure that fence was written into what we agreed to. Which fence are you talking about? The, the one that goes east? The Between the condo? The yes, yeah, the one that goes east. Right. Neil? Yeah, I, I like the design. My, my initial thought was to eliminate the doorway and the light fixture which is one of the things that you'd like to have anyway. And uh, I could see moving the bench. And just eliminate it, it's just a piece of furniture, isn't yeah. it? That's yeah, all that's all pretty right. easy. Yeah. But I also, it would be nice if it stayed open the way it is without a fence across to block people from going from one to the other because I can see it working for the retailers in both directions. I could see the people from the restaurant while they're waiting going over to uh, uh, the coffee shop. I could see people from the coffee shop eventually wanting to be able to walk through and go to the restaurant. I see some synergies there that would that could work, but it's CAP's pr uh, prerogative. If if uh, they, you choose to put a fence across there, you put a fence across there. Um, other than that, just eliminating the doorway and the light fixture, I'm inclined to uh, to vote in favor of the project. I would say that there's a potentially temporary or permanent solution to the to the 
the uh, walk through and has to put some sort of an English looking iron gate there um, that could be closed or opened when it needed to be. If, <coughs> if things needed to have closure, then that could be closed and locked off. And if they weren't, if it worked out that it could, it could just remain open and everybody was happy with that, then, then you just either take the gate away or you leave it there, but at least it looks like it belongs there. Uh, instead of something that's that's totally permanent um, that may interfere with your doorway that would take a little bit of working out um, but just a wrought iron English looking gate um, uh, it's 10 feet wide so that's not sim that simple um, but I would agree to take the the, uh, the shelf out of that that uh, covered area move the bench out of the Others place and rather than just make a brick wall where the wind, where the doorway is, see if there's some, something that would be a little more interesting there that's sort of like something that used to be there and isn't anymore. But beyond that, I don't know what else we can do for anybody here um, other than recommend that somehow you all get together and work work out anything else that uh, that you're not happy with that we um, that we don't really have control over. I understand what you're saying, Bob. But I, I Can I just respond to what you said, um, Don? And that is that I agree with and I understand you said it's a hypothetical, but you know, sometimes doors get flipped open and you find, you know, a little recess or too much recess or something like that. So something that just doesn't look like it can easily be moved. Back into that, that would be acceptable. Uh, as architect, maybe you could keep a you know, timber lintel across the top of it mm -hmm. with brick on the other end. And you would gain more square footage. You would gain more square footage for your restaurant in doing so. I don't know why you would have that niche and not recover the space at the cost of this. Uh, I think the idea of a gate, an ornamental gate, to keep people in and contained into that use, seven o'clock in the morning on Saturday morning. <laughs> I mean, it's just, we, we have apartments upstairs, so it's not just the, the condo owners there. Yeah, and I'm, I'm reserved to we both do. Okay. So we both have... Open. No, you're open at seven. We're not open at well Prairie Expresso, but they don't have bands and they aren't serving alcohol at seven o'clock in the morning. I heard you say you were going to be open at seven o'clock in the morning for English football. Well, okay, and there's no chance that somebody's going to walk outside and smoking and drinking going on early in the morning. I mean, that's generally what happens with those football games. I mean, I'm not, I, I'm we've already, Chairman Hunter, we've already agreed to the use. We're not disputing the use, okay? We, we encourage them and welcome them, but contain it on your property. When we built Holly's first before Inavasi, when we did outdoor seating, it was a requirement to have fencing out on the sidewalk. You couldn't serve alcohol out there without being in a contained area. Okay, things have changed a lot in the last 16 years, but <laughs> yeah. it, it still is something that what 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 we're what I am our, what Center Avenue Partner wishes is to be able to continue to implement ideas and have flexibility for the future. And if if you know Gary you know improves over there and allows access across the property line, I'm not hearing. I'm hearing. You say close the door down, move the bench, encourage the use on the other side, and that's what we're asking for. And we'd be happy with that. Be that doable in your mind, Scott? You're the guy that has to make it work. I didn't say that. <laughs> I said, is, is anybody that doable in your mind? Because you're the one that has to actually make this work no, architecturally. I think uh, we've agreed to all those requests. Um, I think we could easily make those adjustments. What's your time frame on this?
Would you be willing to stretch it out a month and come back here with either you, you guys have worked something out a little better or with just a quick look at, at the revisions you're going to make? Can you, can you lose a month? We could, yeah, we could, we could do that, or I don't know if you guys assign a subcommittee or anything like that, if, that, if that's an option. I mean, either, either way. We don't do a subcommittee, but we can do a special meeting, to maybe. We could, yeah. We'd have to pull that. Right. Okay. Yes. On the wall that stays intact, there are those shutters. There's like three kind of fake windows with shutters. I can't remember. Is that hollow through there or is that brick and they're just fake shutters? And do you have plans around that, especially if you're going to have that railing there? Like, will those shutters stay in place? Are you going to open that up? Like, what's you going to brick it closed? What's the intention there? they're still like ventilated so it's not like okay because it's spring break okay all right i'm just thinking of other alternatives for noise abatement so around that So, Mike just informed me that the, the, there is no interim village board meeting in, uh, in March because of spring break. So, you'd have to come to the uh, to the April meeting. You know, just push everything off in a, a month, and then. There, I mean, there's the March 9th meeting, but we we're talking about if we brought changes back to a, a ABR meeting, it's not going to make a difference whether we do a special meeting late March or whether we go to the regular April ABR because either one of them will be before the next village board meeting, which would be the, the first village board meeting in April. Either one would be before those. Um, Yeah, no, that one's canceled because of spring break, the March 23rd. Yeah, so um, the April April 13th would be the next village board meeting if we come back to a, a meeting of the ABR in the meantime. So when's the next ABR? Yeah, uh, so April 7th. Yeah. I mean, you heard what we would recommend that you approach and, and you come back and show us how you're going to do it, I suppose. And, and uh, if there's any other further resolution between uh, uh, Center Avenue and, and Lawrence, um, you know, bring that to the table too. Make, it, make this all a lot easier. <laughs> Couple of straightforward things. Make sure they have more people on the fence too. Do you know how high the fence or is supposed to be or can go? Probably six feet, but I'll double check. You might need a variance to go more than six feet, mm -hmm. but I'll double check that. I'll let you know. Uh, can I ask a question? Yeah. So, yeah. Limit all pedestrian traffic from the from the west, including the access from the village sidewalk. Yeah. Okay. Are you are you okay with that? Yeah, you would not be able to, if if so you no, it's probably, you can't. So you can't. It's a gate that you could close and lock, so that you can't get through from the west, which is what Bob's complaint is, right? What about from the south, though? From through the village uh, connection. Yeah, 
the Smith Wine Bar. Okay. Gateway. No, I, I see. I'm and, not. Uh, I'm not gate. looking at where the various property lines are, and who owns the village, and what the village owns, and what what everybody owns here. It's the. So I don't know that you can get from here over there without going across Center Avenue property. Can you? You could if you. There's a Transformers. I, I know this because I built all those power lines that were back there, all the easements, every pipe in the ground. But in ComEd, AT&T and Comcast to do it, I coordinated the construction and I built it all. Okay. There's Open up one of those archways. Absolutely. And just drop it right down on the ground. It's not, that's not part of the development. Right. Yeah. You know, so then you would eliminate the connection to Scranton Alley from the village sidewalk? We, what we would hope for is that the connection would come down from the center of the avenue to the uh, What we would want to do is activate it in the way that you're activating from the east towards your pub. We would activate from the west center avenue down our portion of the with a different gate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So basically, I'm cutting it off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's no, the that gate that connects to it. But also, you still walk the door. Yeah. I'm saying that you don't walk through yeah. the gate I mean, I if the gate is preventing you from going from Center Avenue properties to your property. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're containing the use. And I, it's, 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 it's a crazy thing to do, but I understand, you know, what, we're, what, what Bob was saying. And then I think that would increase the concerns that we have for our building because that would really bring that foot traffic right up through, right next yeah, to our property, right, right next to our fences. Well, I don't think that's a great solution. Maybe it seems like you're cutting off your nose to spite your face. You are. I mean, it's. I, I think it's that Neil has a great it's energy in that area. I love what's going on back there. You mean in the parking lot behind your building? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, because people want to park. People want to park. Right. 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 Um, so, you know, for every action, we would have to step up how we police and monitor and um, do all that. I would like to, just one last thing, that, uh, that my trial, this is only my second weekend down of this year.
We've always been willing to talk about it. And I think that communication is a big part of what's lacking here. You know, it's just getting out there and working on things out with the neighbors first. Yeah. To it's be a part of this redo, redo would be, as soon as you get a redraft, send it on to us and we'll share our thoughts with you. Okay. That's good. We don't know what that redraft is going to be. So, <laughs> options, Scott? I don't Thank know. <laughs> well, I think certainly the uh, elimination of the door is an easy fix. That's an easy Elimination fix. of the it's ledge is an easy fix. Uh, pedestrian circulation is a, it would be a, it would be a shame in my uh, mind to the, the whole function of the downtown. And that's where you know, I, I can agree with you, and I see I see Bob's point. But again, I, I, it's too bad we can't lose about four or five parking spaces back there and really make make an event space out of that. Back the end of the alley. Back where? On my property? Yeah, well, whoever owns that, yeah, all of that. Let the my village. I don't. Yeah. I know, Bob. I'm yeah. taking your property. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. I understand. I think we're in good hands here to put everything on the side, I have to say. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Bob. All right. We're going to send you guys off with a direction. Uh, I'm a little bit unsure of what that is. The easy part's the window. We're fine with getting rid of the door. I think we can add the window, whatever. Fine with the fence, um, fine with the railing. Uh, where I have the big problem is calling, putting a gate up. A gate is usually something that opens. What this is is an iron fence. It's an iron fence that you can and open. Forth, and, I, and we're totally against that. That's exactly Understanding it. after the village PC, you know, ZBA meeting, that this is a walkway. Now, if they came back later and said that we think it should be something else and we want to build in between there or whatever, then that's their prerogative to come back and do that. But I, we just can't sit and wait forever. No, uh, I agree with you, Gary. Six years since the bank moved out. I don't want to keep waiting on this, you know. So I think we're, we're against the fact that, you know, we're of, not, of missing out the fact that there is a walkway through there. No, I think that would be a... It's a good vibe for the oh, village. Yeah. Any ideas? How to, how to pursue, I, I mean, we're trying to turn these guys loose without any direction. Well, I, it sounded to me like we were coming to a consensus that they would, uh, you know, change the door to, uh, to, you know, a brick pattern or some other feature and eliminate the ledge and approve it with those conditions. And that would leave the option up to, up to them if they want to, to put sort a, out how to a cedar fence along there, a picket fence, that'd be up to them if they can get approval for it. If they can get approval for it, yeah. Right. And maybe we'll step back the window or whatever. I mean, to, the whole point is, though, I guess, you know, if they get approval for it. I mean, if, if you can't exit our building and jump out the window or a door that isn't even there anymore, doesn't that kind of the wall serve as a fence? So it's like, in my mind, why would you need a fence there? I mean, unless they want to continue it back to cut off our property from theirs. That's and it. we've always had that east-west yeah. thing that Bob says he designed. He did design it. It goes east-west, right underneath our drive through right onto his property, and back and forth, and people use it all the time. Oh, he, okay. built a, he built a gate there to use it. All right. I mean, that's the only way you can beat a dead horse here. <clears throat> so, yeah. Let's just make a motion and see where it goes. Am I up again? My motion would be okay. to table it for a month. <laughs> I don't think we need to table it because w I think we know what we want to do. Yeah, I don't think right. that that given what what Gary's position is on a gate and what Bob's position is on a, on a no through passage, you know, we're between a rock and a hard place, so we have to look at what we've got here. Yeah, and not get into the politics. And it. I don't think we can even say put a gate there, can we? I mean, we're kind of cutting okay. off. It's an easement, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know what it is. I mean, that's what that's right. what it's a uh, utility easement that's yeah. like 10 feet. Yeah. Right. So I'm just not sure what we can. 
I mean, I could see making it an operable gate, but I don't know well, if that would. Well, that's what I was talking about. So but I don't know what that does besides someone coming. An operable gate, I'm fine, but this one. Yeah, but that then lock. I can see someone with their little but chain link. But it's an operable <laughs> gate that you can lock <laughs> if this thing doesn't come to fruition where you have the ability to go back and forth instead of a picket fence. Yeah, know. but I think that. So should our motion, should our motion include everything if you're getting there from the, from except the, the gate? Center Avenue. Yeah, I wouldn't. I would not throw the gate in there. Right. That's, That's what I'm saying. Unless you come up with some options of leaving it open or not. Yeah. I mean, to me, I, we've tried to work with them, and if they want, I mean, our point was that the whole idea of the pub was to utilize the fact that it's Scranton Alley, mm -hmm. and when we looked at that definition and talked to our attorney George Covington, it was the feeling was I think what the village attorney agreed to that it's a pedestrian walkway for access and egress on a non-exclusive basis. And if the whole design of that walkway was for small businesses, that's the walkway of small businesses, not, not mm -hmm. our land. So our purpose has changed from a drive-through, you know. Okay, so let's just get going on this. We got a couple of other things. Are we approving or are we um, referring? Recommending. We're recommending. recommending. Yeah. So um, we'll, we'll try this first. I uh, recommend uh, to approve the submitted uh, site plan um, with the th three um, revisions. One, to eliminate the door on the west elevation to be replaced with some type of architectural feature, um, window, something that is um, designed by the client. Um, two, to eliminate the ledge at the on, in the underpass of the existing walkway, and three to provide a new fence along the um, was that the south wall, the south walkway between the condominiums and the property. We're already going to do that, right? Right. Yeah. We'll just put it in because yeah. I didn't see it down there. So if we can. Just... That'll be a six foot high solid wood fence. Yeah, That's or the tallest about, allowed. Like the existing. Yep. Six or seven. Michael did that. Okay. Right now, six foot that's there. Right. Okay. Um, do we need to address the light fixture? Is that a? Would you keep the light fixture in this location then, if that's, or would you try to place something? I mean, that's not our. I mean, I don't think we need to say anything about that, but maybe address the and the light fixture to be addressed with the revision of the door. Because we're seeing this right again. Or is it just going, it's just getting kicked to the... If we approve it, it goes to the village then, board. Okay. It goes to the village board, and right. I, trust, I trust Scott to, yeah. to do the right thing here, so... Yeah, and, may, and review the light. Okay. I'm, you would do that anyways, I know. So. Yeah, I mean, it will be the review. Something from my person different today that we've done. Yeah, I don't know if you do too, what, you'll know what to do. That's not. Did I miss anything? After all of those discussions, that seems pretty. I think you got everything I can think of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I second it. All right. Okay. Roll call. Neil? Aye. Uh, Julie? Aye. Matt? Aye. And Bob? Aye. Okay. Uh, four aye. The recommendation passes, and it'll go to the village board Monday evening. Right. Thank you, you know, let me, let thank me you just for your say, time. Should, this this should probably I don't know if the village needs to be aware of this this dispute. Uh, they are, uh, yeah, or they will be. They, they are. Well, that's yeah. what I'm going to say. Let me draw. We, we saw the letter that came in this okay. afternoon. Okay, yeah. so if we, if we, we saw that. I hope they understand that we did just kick it down the road. Yeah, I'll, no, I'll talk to them a little more about it. That's fine. <laughs> thank you. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Okay, Good luck. guys. Thank you. Okay, what's next here? Oh, yes, we do have more Bridge? items, don't we? Holy <laughs> the next two items should be less controversial, I think. Um, <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> we'll see. Know. Don't prove me wrong. I really like the old dumpster enclosure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be mad to see it go. Right, so we've got the uh, public safety building uh, dumpster enclosure. And uh, so we talked about... Uh, you know, the desirability of starting over with a new dumpster enclosure and just doing a six foot solid wood fence. And, uh, and I found a, uh, 
I think a good fence that at a, at a good price that we can fit in our budget. And so the plan is just Excuse to. Me, folks, um, but could you move out in the hallway? People? People? We, we got a couple items to finish up of business. Yep. Thanks. Thanks, Neil. Um, so the, the plan is to uh, remove the entire existing enclosure and put the, uh, the new fence shown here just around the dumpster only, as we talked about before, and, and leaving the generator outside the enclosure so it can get the uh, proper airflow for cooling. And uh, we're thinking of leaving it the natural wood color. And that's well, the it. natural wood color will turn dirty gray very, you know, in a two years. Right. Um, what we and the other thing I would recommend, I mean, you know, my son-in-law, he's this fire chief. He saw this because he got a copy of it. He said oh, okay. those hinges are going to last about seven days. Yeah. Uh, so get the heaviest duty hinges that you can. Okay. To put on this thing. I thought we talked about staining it or painting it the color of the of the block. Can we do that? Well, we could do that. Yeah, we could stain it that. Um, well. So we're going to do that with the old enclosure. Really, you prefer the, the, the buff color of the block rather than staining it white? Well, I think I would just leave it wood and let it turn gray. It really gets yeah, nasty. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah. I don't care. The existing fence has uh, a couple of steel bollards. Is there any possibility of, if you do it exactly like this, you wouldn't be able to open the gate? But it would be nice to have the steel bollards there because these these things things do take a lot of abuse. Yeah, that's why right. I'm yeah. Um, yeah. We are going to leave the steel bollards there. So you're right. There there is a little bit of a return on the existing, um, and it will have it will have that so that it clears the bollard. Yeah. Before it, so the gate won't go all the way to the corner like in the illustration. What yes, this this is actually a photo of someone else's dumpster enclosure, not a. Uh, not yeah, a computer right. rendering of our design. <laughs> we couldn't afford that. <laughs> they always put yeah, the name the on it. Like yeah, that. make sure there's no name on it. <laughs> what is this over here, do you think? Look at that. No, 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 the, the uh, sign. There's a little sign. It, it says, what, stop something? I don't know what it says. Yeah, don't run through this. What does it say? Do not enter or something? Stop. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah but. <laughs> <laughs> so we should, I think we should stain it. Something, okay. either to match the brick or match some of the other color. But I, I'm with you. I think that yeah. wood's gonna look bad really quick. It does. I okay. got it all around my back. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, I, yeah. Looks good when it's new, and it looks okay with lots of landscaping around it. When yeah. It's but in the middle, no. Okay. Well, if, if you're okay with either white or buff, I can talk to our painter and see what he recommends and stain it either, stain either it. the white or the, or yeah. the buff. Color. Yeah, stain, stain it. it. Do yeah. some opaque right. stain. stain. This is yeah. going to come as rough sawn, probably. Yeah. 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 Done. Okay. So, would someone like to make a motion? Julie, it's your turn. Yep, uh, I would like <laughs> to recommend that we approve, that the Village Board approve this site plan as presented. Uh, or I'm sorry, with the conditions of making sure we have heavy duty hinges, the bollards to remain, and that it's going to be, have an opaque stain applied to it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Who seconded it? Uh, I second it. Okay. Post. Okay. One more shot passes. Okay, so the next thing, which is really pretty cool. You, you, you want to go into this? You want me to? You go ahead. You can. So go I got a it. call from Drew the other day. I don't know. From who? Drew. So I want you to come up and look at something. So he uh, informed me that the Green Bay Bridge is going to be rebuilt. And through a series of government grants and, and whatnot. Um, and so they're trying to figure out what to, what to build. So Jeff, uh, our, our village engineer, and Drew and I went over there and looked at the bridge that's there. Um, the, uh, and we kind of came to the conclusion, just the three of us talking, that they, everybody seemed to really like the, uh, the Moffat Bridge that we did however many years ago that was. Uh, except that the stonework is not going to apply here because of the, con the uh, land conditions. 
But in the process of that, what, what Drew originally called me about was these pictures of these things that are sort of uh -huh. uh, left over from uh, an older bridge. They, they serve no function whatsoever other than to, to hold the, uh, the wood railing. I mean, mm -hmm. this, I remember when this bridge was wood. Uh, you drove mm -hmm. across it, it an old wood bridge. Do you remember that? You've been around. No, I don't remember that. Well, anyway, so I, you know, saw these things but never saw them. Right. And so the Illinois Preservation Society says we well, need to incorporate that into the bridge. I said, well, we can't. That's, that's dumb. Uh, <laughs> didn't quite say I said that. Uh, so we went out there, and I'm looking at these, and I thought, you know, these could maybe be reused, repurposed someplace else. And my first thought was, you take these out, you cut them off. They go down about maybe 18 inches below the, the walking surface here, and they're anchored. Uh, with, with plates, it, it's old steel, it's got markings on it that say, I think it's U.S. Steel, Illinois. Um, they're kind of rusty looking. Mm -hmm. uh, they got this funky little gusset plate up there in the middle. So I said, well, maybe we could just cut them off. And my first thought was, you take them down, you stick them on the beach, and you put a cover over them, and you make them a sunshade. And then Drew said, you know, we're thinking about doing something at the post, at the, uh, uh, the train station uh, because we got to mm -hmm. reorganize the way the bikes are. So, okay, so there's 12 of these, these arms, and they're not all in pristine, none of them are in pristine condition. Uh, so, you know, we're just thinking, okay, what do we do? We get our thinking hats on, and uh, does any of this make any sense? We don't know if it's affordable or how you, how you would anchor it or what the roof would be. Uh, but it seems like it's a little bit of history that we start moving around town. Mm -hmm. um, is that a dumb idea? No. You can say it is. I don't think it is. I think it's a great idea. I'm going to be sad to see him gone. I've been driving over that bridge mm -hmm. Did you since ever I was see a before? baby. I don't remember. I mean, I don't know. I, I, maybe I haven't. I don't know. I mean, there's a, there's a trust. It's, you know, unless you're walking across the bridge, which I've never done. Because you guys are east siders. <laughs> <laughs> this is part of our west side heritage. <laughs> Put some in your, in your front lawn, you know, from the bus stop. <laughs> but what happens when you move a piece of the west side history over to the east side? Of course, the, they, the, west, the east side always takes the best of the west side. <laughs> <laughs> All my wealthy neighbors move away. It's very sad. <laughs> Well, they, you said they can't be incorporated into the new bridge. Like that's out of the question. I just don't know. I mean, no, like the new really. bridge design not is in really. here. Yeah, the 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 uh, if if you buy the notion that the that the new bridge should match the Moffat Bridge, so that there's continuity in Lake Bluff bridges, and there's only two of them, uh, yeah. and there might be a way to integrate some of that stone down there. This bid, this this group, pretty much was responsible for the Moffat Bridge. You didn't know that. I'm very happy with that. Well done. <laughs> so this, uh, the second page, the lower one, is the design of the bridge. They're they're planning for the Green Bay Road bridge, and I guess there's not a lot of right of way width there, no. so th th it's difficult to get the historic pieces in without. Yeah. Well, that's a problem with them, them now. I mean, they are kind of a ha you know. I mean, you're right. like yeah. it is uh, riding your bikes through there because of that crisscross. You know, you get one bad handle catch or something. Right. It is a yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty sad bridge. Yeah. Yep. So it would be just like the Green Bay Bridge, where the railing is on the outside. Yeah. And the sidewalk is is the yeah, sidewalk. That's like a normal. And it's the railing is a is a state of Illinois barrier railing. Yeah. And there's no additional side. There's no additional railing. I'm I'm commenting on the actual. Bridge design. There's no railing here between the sidewalk no. and the street. Yeah, not required. That's right. Just yeah. yeah, but that's a normal road sidewalk relationship. Yeah, it's a five foot or six right? foot right. wide yeah. sidewalk. it's better. I think that's better than narrowing that to accommodate some secondary. It's a big wide sidewalk, and it's it's a yeah. pretty. It's not a four inch step. You know, it's yeah. like that. 
Well, that's the way the Moffat Bridge is now. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. We did that bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Were you were you here when we did oh, that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Then you remember that. <laughs> that one I remember. I have yeah. the plans for it for some reason. You, you so can I appreciate like this. Oh, right. <laughs> when 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 George Wessel was the, was the uh, village engineer, and, and uh, I had just retired. But anyway, that's that's another story, kind of. Uh, and the state came and said we're going to replace this thing, and it was a state bridge. It was Jersey barriers mm -hmm. along the side, and it was just a, a hunk of crap. And George took a look at it and told the engineer, no, no you know, he, he said, he told me, he said, Bob's not going to like that. <laughs> <laughs> and so, he was right. And so they brought it here, and they brought their engineer, and they told him we didn't like it. He said, we want to be able to see through it. We want to be able to see the ravine. So yeah. that was step number one. And then they came back with a different designer, and it was even worse. And so we rejected that, and then they hired this other guy who was a young kid with an accent, and he came in with a roll of yellow trace and said, what do you want to do here? Let's, let's make this thing work. And that's how we ended up with nice. what we got. But when they interviewed for bridge uh, engineers this time, they went out and found that guy. Oh, did they? <laughs> yeah, they went out. He said, he's a tall guy with a Scottish accent. I said, yeah, that's him. And he said, well, he came in, but he said the firm he was with, we didn't like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, that's, that's another story. But uh, uh, so that's, that's kind of where this is at. Yeah. Um, and there's no, I don't know what the time frame is, but I think the state would like to know that we've got some other ideas for these things. It might be part of the whole 125th anniversary, like do like a competition, like repurposing these elements. Maybe there's a cool, you could line them up in a circle and create some kind of secondary gazebo. I, you know, there's a hundred things you can do with those. Well, you could take the mm -hmm. gazebo that's up and down and start over. Can they do that? <laughs> there's some, you know, something about this is the way that we're used to driving over to do all of our shopping in Lake Forest and whatnot. Mm -hmm is that these crisscrosses, this truss system, along with these things are pretty important. It's not just, you can't just have this thing, you have to have right. kind of the whole yeah. deal. And I guess you don't have to if you're really trying to repurpose when, it. But. Well, when you see them, when you walk under it though, it's like, oh, this is made to be a canopy. Yeah. It really is. I don't know. They don't do this, anything. This thing next to it is important too. The truss is somehow, yeah. It's just something to consider with, you know, whatever the future opportunity is, is that that truss is part of how we've all been crossing the bridge. Because mm -hmm. if you've never walked across it, I've walked across it a thousand times. Well, I have times. now. Oh, yeah. Well, of course you have now. It was very but cold. That's part of what too. we do all the time. That's mm -hmm. where we run. That's where we ride our bikes to get in the Lake Forest and everything. So I saw Bob graffiti. Bob was here <laughs> on the rail. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun um, issue. We well, need and a the other issue. thing, too, said yeah. that we could have them sandblasted and, and you know, paint them. And I said, right. you know what, there's a neat patina to them. Yeah, that'd but be a they're shame. historic the way they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They'd look goofy if they were nice no. shiny. Anyway, I don't know where we put them besides the train station. Yeah. Uh, Park district? Would they take them? Well, they'd take them if somebody paid for them to go in. I don't know. I don't know. It's a Boy Scouts museum. <laughs> it could be an Eagle pretty, Scout Eagle they're, Scout project. They're <laughs> they're built up sections and they're all riveted together. They're pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. You gotta imagine that, as I tell my clients, it's always way more expensive to try to repurpose something than to just start new. You know, if you're gonna build something. Well in this packet that that, that uh, we got here, the last sheet I think is the Lake Forest uh, Oh yeah. You know, the one that gives oh, us yeah. the Lake Forest train station. But to me, I, I'm surprised that that Lake Forest board approved that. Yeah. I think if, as far as the park district is concerned, I'm not sure how they would react, but I do know they have major, major problems down at the beach right now. Oh, yeah. They've got <laughs> and I suspect that's going to override any consideration. Well, of they're looking for donations. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe we sell it for scrap and donate. The, the <laughs> well, I think cost. what the, to get back to the. the when when uh, Bob brought up the beach, I thought he was going to suggest a D Day reenactment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 Those crazy excess. Yeah. Uh, part of this is, is to get the, the money 
from which whoever it is, so that the, the, the state historical preservation group yeah. has to sign off on this to get a portion of the money. It's the way I understood it. Yeah. And they said, use it on the bridge. Well, there's, you, you couldn't even take it apart to re reuse it again, the way it's yeah. built. Do we know who made the steel for it? Huh? Do you know who made the steel for it? You said there were markings on it. I think it's in, it, it was either it was I think a U.S. steel. Okay. Well, U.S. steel, Illinois. Hmm. Yeah, U.S. steel is in Missouri. Yeah. Uh, well, that's a good one. You have to kind of look through the rust to see it. Okay. Did U.S. steel ever have a plant volcano? Somebody had a steel plant there, didn't they? I don't know. The oh, owner of Stonebridge originally was some kind of steel magnate who uh, who put used steel in the building a lot there. Huh. Forget who he was. You you don't remember Matt, do you? Who that was? Who was the original owner? Of what? Of the Stonebridge, the main house. Was that he? Was he was in the steel industry, in the steel right? Steel That's where he made his right. money, right? Uh -huh. yeah. so, wouldn't that be interesting? Yeah, he had some. There's some interesting steel in there. I'd, yeah. Don't yeah, his, that, that house is, I mean, that's why it's a fortress. Yeah. All right, anything else? I don't know what, what we were supposed to do with this idea. I just, well, just bounced it off of Yeah, so yeah I mean, so if you come up with any uh, yeah. ideas, you know, shoot me an email or it could be a message or something. Any more suggestions? I don't think you could use the truss. I don't think I have to look at it differently. Way. I don't know how you'd even get that, that apart. But I'm with you. I yeah. think the trust makes it. But and the two are structurally, there's no reason for this thing. Yeah. Other than they had it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Interesting. I mean, I've driven across it many times, but I've never walked across it. I haven't either on that way through it. Yeah. What you said about the bike hitting a rail. Yeah. It's so true. It is. It's the it's a nightmare. I don't know. I feel like when we were younger and the kids were younger and riding across that bridge with them too, it's kind of yeah. freaky because this is actually open, not yeah. like a Moffat bridge, you know, you can't have a kid can't fall through there. Right. Right. Yeah. Because there's a screen, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's a screen. Right. Whereas this, you know, I've thought about it, I'm like, and on both the ends, it's like Yeah, all you have to do is like hit right. this side in like ill force you over the other side. Right, right. I'm, I'm sure yeah, the new nice. bridge would have something, you know, a code compliant guardrail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would yeah. assume. Yeah, it's a fun, that's a fun thing to think about. These pictures were funny too. I was like, I've never, no, I've never been down there before. No, how would you have those before. views, right? We're not yeah. We should cut yeah. this off. Okay, should we adjourn? Yeah, then? let's adjourn. We'll adjourn. Yeah. We'll adjourn. Okay, we're done. Okay, we're adjourned. <laughs> we went yep. yammering off. Yeah, right. Yeah. It was good yammering. So okay. here's the stone bridge photo. It shows the, uh, column and beam connection with um, rivets on the column and bolts on the beam. I'll show you guys wow. another direction. This, this thing has got rivets all over. It's R just rivets down low and yeah, bolts up high. Yeah. They did a mix of some <laughs> rivets really and cool. some bolts <laughs> on, the, on the thing. If one rivet will do, then 40 will do that. There's the, uh, yeah. <laughs> right. the William Kelly residence, Lake Forest. They wrote the name That's on the- That's his name. Uh, oh, is that right? The, yeah, uh, right. On the beam. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah. When is that going to come back to somewhere? Oh, I think it's it's <laughs> at the HPC every month, right? For okay. for more discussion until yeah, I don't know. I'm it's in, in, in the end, it's going to Are you be off up that? to the. I quit uh, that. Oh, I, I quit that after the after the fiasco at uh, at, at Moffitt and yeah. Cedar Cliff. That, that was the worst thing. I'm surprised those people still want to come to Lake Forest. Mm -hmm. Oh, at uh, Prospect it, it, and, and Moffat it's, there? It's, it's right. Yeah, 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 right, right, yep, yep. That went on for over a year, cost them hundreds of thousands of dollars because of some idiots in town. Yeah, wow. I think my some kids are them. watching us right now. Some of them. Yeah. <laughs> you guys talk really slow. Well, I think we, we just adjourned, <laughs> yeah. so I think they'll just cut it off. I hope so. Yeah, yeah uh -huh. because we yeah. just... Well, I have right. one more item for you. Oh. Sure, okay. what's that? The Verizon sign. They've installed oh, I knew you were going to bring that.